The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Thursday, May 20th, 2021 years after zero. We have a legend in the studio. Uh, that's right. Joining us inside the studio today is a man who's going into the Colts Ring of Honor here this upcoming season, November 28th. I believe the game where the Colts are hosting Tom Brady, and he's an inevitable NFL Hall of Famer as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Matthews. Yeah! Strip Sack King. I think I could call you Strip Sack King. Uh, I believe you're, folks are calling you Sandman too there for a bit, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, the microphone. we got to move it. That's on us. I mean, we bad, it. Yeah, bad, that's 100% bad. Connor's fault. That's me. Uh, <laughs> Sandman, though, was a nickname for a bit, too, right? Absolutely. That's uh, courtesy of T and Frog over at the Colts Complex. And that's because? Uh, I used to outdo my off-season training, running in the sand pits uh, during the times as a player in off-season. So, damn. We got this fucking guy. He was a fifth-round pick. He played special <laughs> yeah. teams last year. T and Frog, by the way, that's the type of – they're the equipment managers. Have been around for a long time. Will be around probably for the rest oh, yeah. of the Indianapolis Colts' existence beyond hilarious human beings here. I would imagine how this whole thing started is they were talking to other people in the building, which is what happens, by the way, which is why – the backbone of a team, really, and they don't get enough credit, athletic trainers and, and medical staff and equipment managers get nowhere near the amount of credit. And they're, by the way, the people you want to hang out with. This is like yeah. a uh, hilarious group of people. I assume they went around to the rest of the building and were like, hey, that fucking uh, guy that you guys got, where? Alabama A&M? Where, where, Al- he, he, he's fucking in a sand pit now. <laughs> yeah, we got a sand man. They probably came out fucking with you, by the way. They're probably like, sand man, here we yeah. go. And then it probably just like, they're like, oh, no, this guy is the guy. Connor, Ty, the, uh, the boys in the back, we appreciate you. Uh, Robert, I was very lucky to be a teammate of yours and watching mm-hmm. you work and the way you went about your business and the way people respected you is what I like really enjoyed. But you were the first person I saw in the Colts building, and I have an entire stand-up about this, and it's real, that I realized, like, oh, this is a different league. You know, like, <laughs> oh, this is, he was jumping rope, and you had, like, old-school headphones on, like, old-school <laughs> headphones, like a cassette maybe he had at this time. He was jumping <laughs> rope, and he, was, and he just, he it may, might have went, and they were talking about a lot of things. This is one, you're a tour, you're a rookie, you get a tour around the building. It would have happened last weekend for all the rookies that got drafted and everything like that. And I just looked and I watched, it was like, it seemed like five minutes straight. Like, it wasn't obviously, but it seemed like he was just going, not even skipping. Like, there was not even a skip. He was pissed off at whatever he was either staring at or looking at. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Obviously, he had brands on him as well. He was a Q. And they were, these were the thickest I'd ever seen. And there's like, the, the conversation is like, okay, the thicker the brand, obviously, that means the longer it was sitting on there. Like, that's just my natural thing. So I was like, looking at him, like, this guy, I'm happy he's my fucking teammate. Who? You know, what is that? And they're like, that's Robert Mathis. I'm like, Robert Mathis is my fucking guy. (laughs) We just kind of walked through. I was very quiet. I don't think people know this. I was very quiet, wasn't I? Like, uh, I was very quiet early. I'll say the first day. Okay. After that, he was off and running. I did get comfortable, you know, yeah. and I did get okayed by certain people on the team, which is very nice of them. I think that kind of helped me out in other places. Mm-hmm. You were one of them, so I appreciate the hell out of you for doing that for oh, me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but whenever you think about the NFL, because right now, Robert, and I don't know how long we get a chance to chat with you, so I do just want to kind of get right into it because I think you have a wealth of knowledge, especially with the Gridiron Gang, uh, mm-hmm. which is you are doing with these camps and helping out kids and everything. We'll get to that for sure. Right, but right. when you're talking about NFL football and you played, you know, HBCU uh, back in the day, Alabama and and Bulldogs. Hey, let's go. Hey, let's go. Uh, 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 the Black College National Champs, by the way. Yes. Ooh, I didn't know yes. that. I didn't know. Wait, yeah. right now? Yeah. Right now. Put some respect on it. Okay, listen. I, hey, listen. I will. Let's go. Can, yeah. The Black College National, National Champions. Champs. Champions. Champions. Yeah. The Alabama A&M. Bulldog. Uh, Bulldog. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, hill, uh, the Hill. The Hill. Yeah. Okay, so when you're playing there, even though 
the Alabama A and M Bulldogs, the heel, are are national champions. I assume right. who you're playing against though are not then, right? Yeah. And whenever they talk about making the jump, like from college to the NFL, we're seeing mm-hmm. that right now. We're going to see that with a lot of guys. Quiddy Pay, by the way, he's right. the Michigan guy. Who just how difficult was it to make the jump? Or if you have it, you have it early. You think like it, it, how hard is it to go from playing against college kids to grown ass men, especially at like outside linebacker, defensive end, pass rush positions like that? Well, the biggest difference is the speed of the game. Uh, you have a lot of guys. Well, if it's uh, just a division one, double A, division two, you know, I'm, I'm kind of dating myself. It's just after the first wave of starters, the, the kind of the talent kind of drops off. So you have Alabama's; they they're deep across the board. So once you come into the league, is how fast can you adjust? Because uh, they're going to make their adjustments by the next series. And so what what do you, what are you uh. doing? To become a player that that, that sticks. So it's the know? mental thing. It, it's oh, the yeah. mental thing because oh, they're yeah. making adjustments. If you beat them early, it's oh, like, yeah. okay, congratulations, you got me. I'm going to the sideline, and this is something where I'm either going to rely on the 25 plus years of me playing football to fix this, or we're going to watch film, and then you have to have that next play then too, right? And Absolutely. that's why it's difficult sometimes for people to make the jump because it's like you have the ability, but you don't have the experience. Is that only experience gained? You think, or how do you learn that type of shit? Oh. Experience is the best teacher, so you're going to fail a whole lot more than you succeed. Uh, in this game, it's, it's, it's chess. I always say it's chess, not checkers, because in checkers, you can move maybe one, maybe two three moves ahead. Chess, you got to you gotta think four or five moves ahead. So if I beat – it was always myself and Ryan Dean. You know, shout out to Ryan Dean. That's, that's big bro. Uh, we used to practice against each other for the better part of almost, like, I want to say a decade. If he would beat me or block me, he would tell me why he did it. Mm. Uh, but if I would uh, beat him in practice, <clears throat> uh, I would tell him what I saw. Oh. And uh, we would just bounce ideas off each other. And then once you get to the game, these are guys that don't know you. So the things that you have to do is trust yourself, trust your process, trust your grind. So when you get in the game, this guy that does not know me, I'm going to whoop him because the guy I, I'm beating the guy in practice who's older than I am. And he knows what I'm going to do. So if I, if I can beat the guy that knows me, I can for sure beat the guy that does not know me. Shout out to Ryan Dean, by the way. I think Deemer. <laughs> I think Northern Illinois University, I think. And I'm only going to know that because he has a tattoo that is not good. That, <laughs> oh, no. That involves, that involves that. I think that's self brother He's a great guy. One of the yeah. best guys, by the way. It never gets talked about, Deem. Never gets right. talked about, by the way, in that entire team. But tackle, good guy. Good oh, guy. Absolutely. Um, but whenever you talk about him telling you why you're doing whatever you're wrong or what he saw and you telling him that's the type of thing I think used to happen back in the day and then whenever now with all these in gridiron gang you're training the next generation of QB haters I believe that is but but also you have other positions training the future as well it's becoming this beautiful thing how do you feel about like the guys getting together and working in the offseason together like for instance tight end you just got announced where all these tight ends are going to go together and I think by the way I think that is going to become something business wise too like uh, I'm not talking about like them having tight ends like as a camp that's probably going to happen as well but I'm talking about how they get treated as a uh, negotiation with the NFL if you get all the top people in one position that is potentially being slighted business wise and this is not me talking to any tight end or them telling me anything I'm just assuming from being in a conversation maybe after a couple beers have been had before with other people there's a chance that they're going to talk and be like we should be paid like wide receivers are getting paid right now. Like our numbers should be more because we're blocking and we're catching. I assume that's potentially going to change the game. So it's good for them to come together and, and do that whole thing. Outside linebackers and pass rushers have done this. Von Miller, I believe, had one. And then now, I remember when it first started, kind of the OGs of this whole thing, the mm-hmm. offensive linemen were pissed that the defensive ends or pass rushers for their team were telling p- uh, potential opponents like, hey, this is uh, how you get better, this is how you get better, but now everybody does it. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that whole thing? And do you think like iron sharpens iron is the most important Absolutely. thing anyways? Well, to go back to uh, with the tight ends, that's great because you have to have a, a business strategy amongst each other because you, you, you are fraternity. So with tight ends, they – the guys that want to get paid, you have to label yourself a pass catcher, not a tight end. With pass rushers, you have to label yourself a pass rusher, not a D lineman. I'm not a I'm not a DN. I'm not an outside linebacker. I'm not a D tackle. I'm not a nose guard. I'm a pass rusher. 
Uh-huh. And that comes with a different different uh, level of, I guess, pay expectation. Yeah, because it's kind of setting the tone. Kyle Pitts, they were telling him that he should come out as a uh, wide receiver yeah. instead of a tight end because yeah. the franchise tag, I think it's like $5 million difference or like $4 million difference. And that's kind of where you immediately look at the franchise tag. It's like, okay, this gives us the top five average contracts not without bonuses, but here's the top five average contracts. So you can immediately look at that number and see how each position is paid. Like, okay, this is how this is paid. This is how this is paid. The tight end and wide receiver disparity, pretty big. I mean, that is a pretty mm-hmm. big thing. Linebackers, though, it's very fascinating because linebackers also have middle linebackers, inside yeah. linebackers, and outside linebackers that are being titled outside linebackers because they're not DNs because DNs don't get paid mm-hmm. enough. So it, it's like a, it's an entire thing. And Darius Leonard now, mm-hmm. who I believe you know rather well, I oh, think yeah. I think you were there for yeah, his rookie maniac. year. Yeah. yeah, the maniac, hell of a player, mm-hmm. uh, HBCU guy as well. I mean, he is he has taken over. Uh, mm-hmm. This Colts defense with the new generation. Now conversations are that he's owed eighteen million dollars, or he's negotiating for eighteen million dollars a year, and all that stuff. I think if anybody has earned it, I think Darius Leonard has earned a, mo- a massive contract. Uh, I my sources have told me this is not like happening tomorrow. Like, not this, is, okay. this is not. My sources have told me mm-hmm. this is not happening like right. Like, this is not like a tomorrow, next week type right. announcement. Maybe. Th- things could change, but my they said this is coming maybe, but it's not in there. But then when this made us look at the um, at the contracts for every linebacker, very, very interesting oh, here, yeah. Robert. Khalil Mack, $23.5 million a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, Khalil Mack, your thoughts? Hell of a player, huh? Yeah. yeah, 23, yeah. 23 million well spent. <laughs> Vaughn Miller, 19. He's coming back, obviously, after. Uh, Bobby Wagner, though. There's like the first inside linebacker at 18. CJ Mosley, Judon, Zadarius Smith, Chandler Jones, Bud Dupree, then Shaquille Barrett. But that's all pass rushers, basically. That, yes, sir. That is all, that, that, that's all pass rushers <laughs> yeah, making the money. That, in your mind, and this is going to be a biased decision or a biased opinion, is pass rusher the second most important position on the field? It's the most important position on the field outside quarterback. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so quarterback, yeah. aside I, from the quarterback. Yeah, you have to put them they're in, they're in their own different world. So, But I think the NFL get, is starting to see that, though. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the quarterback position is the engine to, to every team's automobile. That's You're just, a quarterback hater, and you know that. I'm, I, you know, call it for what it is, a spade a spade. <laughs> no quarterback, no chance. And you know, you and yeah. I both know that. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> but they're there for that. If you have, and I always use this uh, example, your pass rusher faces off with the left tackle. Your star left tackle beats him, sacks the quarterback, and stops that quarterback from throwing it to the number one receiver. That pass rusher just neutralized three guys on one play. And also probably $130 million in <laughs> one year. Total, yeah. 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 yes, yes, right That's one so player that has to attack that. You have that, that pyramid where you have the quarterback is tops. Then I will put the pass rusher. Now you have left tackle and the number one receiver. And that's just based on importance. That's just the bottom line. You can follow the franchise tag money to as evidence for that. Do you think you're with the Gridiron Gang, you're getting a chance to work? And, and what you guys are doing, by the way, I got a chance to kind of hear <clears throat> how the business has worked out. Because we've seen it since the beginning. We got a chance to chat with you uh, since the beginning of this thing. You and right. Dan, I was pumped for you guys. Like yeah. I'm like, okay, here we go. Two good guys. And I told Dan this. I was happy Dan got back into football, by the way. I, oh, I, yeah. I think you were as well. And everybody that knows him, Muir is a hilarious human. So I'm happy he's back in football. But getting a chance to kind of watch you guys go through this entire process and then getting a chance to hear what the business is now you guys have i think you've grown like maybe 600x since we've talked the amount of people you have on these fields Mm -hmm. it feels like you are really transforming how indianapolis and indiana uh high school kids are training you got you had chuck pagano out there training safeties there was an entire field basically (laughs) you had a a running back coach uh walker Uh, yeah you had walker out there there was like 20 running backs out Mm -hmm. there you have these Pass rushers. You now. This is not your largest crew. You had a hundred or, or fifty-three and a third wide field, and it was just stacked with people that were running sprints or whatever. Mm-hmm. You have this massive conglomerate going on right now. Do you see? <laughs> do you see a lot more people though wanting to be pass rushers? Uh, I would assume that's where a lot of the big bodies, instead of maybe uh, maybe defensive tackle, even though there's Aaron Donald still doing that thing, or offensive line or inside. I feel like pass rush is a. I think a lot of people see it as a lane. Like, okay, there's a lot of money to be made in this mm-hmm. thing. Are you? seeing that even at the younger level and maybe the way parents speak and shit? Absolutely. I feel like it's a lot of pride coming in, coming to that position 
because naturally you want to be the quarterbacks in the whole seven on sevens, the uh, the, the Deion Sanders or uh, DB stuff, stuff like that. So the front line guys, it's not really, uh, it's not the most sexy positions. So once you got go there, go out there and get a sack, do your sack dance, and you start. You see these Aaron Donalds, Von Millers, Chandler Jones, these Khalil Max. Say, hey, how they change, just transform the game, how they alter the game. That inspires the younger guys. Like, okay, so I'm not this skinny, fast guy. So I'm a little bigger. So let me let me find my let me find my lane. And uh, lo and behold, it works for them, and they're able to do what they want to do, and that's play uh, professional ball. Yeah, and you're by the way, scholarships <clears throat> not just. I assume now. I don't know how young your um, your company is, and in players that you've had, uh, you work with NFL guys, you work with free agent guys, and these guys are working out alongside. By the way, mm -hmm. these high school kids, mm -hmm. these. Other, I mean, it is a very very cool group of people that you have up there. Uh, getting a chance to hear because. I don't know if you guys know this. I got a chance to hear this the other day. Yeah. Okay, this gridiron gang, they're having you know kids from neighborhoods that would never even know maybe that these types of camps exist, right? right. Am I, I speak? Am I because to be honest, I I don't know if this type of shit was happening whenever I was in high school or anything like no. that. I no. don't think so. Like I don't Not remember, at all. But I don't remember this type of stuff. But then as you get older and older, I guess there's like these. And granted, we saw the admission scandal with Doc. We oh, also yeah. <laughs> there's like these things that are happening for certain p groups in certain places, and you don't even really know about it unless you know people that are in it. They're they got kids from inner city Indianapolis that would never even know this thing up there like three times a week busting their ass. I Let's mean, you're go. talking about like changing, like legitimately changing Absolutely. the future here. Absolutely. I think it's it's not only cool what you're doing, getting to teach this like at a high level, but also the opportunity that you're presenting without giving like a handout, right? It's not a handout. Right. It's like, hey, if you want to come work your ass off, you deserve the opportunity to come learn just like everybody else. I want to let you know, I think it's incredibly cool to watch, dude. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, you have uh, schools like Arsenal Tech, uh, Inner City, uh, Warren Central's. Even this happens in every city, by the way, yeah. everywhere in the country. We're, we're talking about in Indianapolis right now, though. Yeah. Hopefully you'll be able to grow to other places, though, because right. what you're doing is very cool. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, 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 it's fun. And you're just doing, doing, doing the things that you love, and it's for a great cause. And, and this is all scholarship. We're not charging these. We're not charging but the bulk of our clients, our football student athletes. And it's a, it's a tribute to the sponsorships. And Coates being the, the spearhead, of, spearhead of that, uh, you have a uh, Golden Sacks. You have e Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly, Golden Sacks, Eli Lilly. Colts uh, involved in this thing. Indianapolis Colts. You know the Colts will not be outdone. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know we told uh, front office what we had in place, and they were like, "Hold up, wait a minute, we're gonna match that because yeah. that's that's always how Mr. Ursay has been. It's if it's a good cause, he's going to back it. And uh, everybody that's that's associated with the Coast organization. So now that you're saying those names, it makes sense whenever I look and I see how many people are there. Mm -hmm. And it's it's incredible because the have you had to... I also have the Steinbrenners, the, the, the Yankees. The, yeah. oh. the Yankees. What? Hey, this is people... people are In behind. Indiana? You got these they people? They live here. I, I don't know think that. Know that yeah. We need to do better business. <laughs> yeah. We should we should be a Yankee show at this point. No, I'm joking. But um, now when you talk about coaching, though, we had Coach JB on the other day. I don't know if you got to see him. He's from uh, Last Chance You on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Only white dude that grew up uh, in Compton in his neighborhood. He is, oh, he's a bad man. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. He yeah, acts, you don't want you don't want no smoke with him. Yeah, the, I would assume he's been through some shit. But oh, yeah. he um, he speaks exactly how like he did not change he did not decide to uh try to act how he thought people were supposed to act he was always himself mm -hmm. and in doing so i think from watching last chance you on netflix wow watching him the guys told me like you got to see this guy you got to mm -hmm. see this guy so i watch him and i'm like there's a lot of coaches like that like uh, now he now is taking it to obviously a different level because he's a head coach as opposed to a position coach but reaching kids reaching dudes is something that coaches have to do like you have to be able to yeah. reach you have to be able to reach Absolutely. the person however you do it you do it there's different ways to do it i think jb uh was the first person to be displayed nationally like hey this is a style of coaching and there's 
probably a lot of deeper conversations that could be had about that as well and why that has not been displayed in other fashions as well. But whenever you have to teach these kids, though, and you said they're coming from in news here in Indianapolis, there's like 17 people shot this weekend yeah. in Indy uh, this yeah. past weekend, I think. It, and there's there's always like even though we're a small city, there's still shit that pops off in every single city. There's a lot of people that come in from out of town. There's big business here, obviously. I mean, there's Indianapolis is a very fascinating city. Mm-hmm. Whenever these kids come, do you and Dan, you know, like I assume you have to school them with some game too, like hey, like life and everything, like or is it just kind of an escape for them whenever they get up there? Is it all work? Like how do you, you know what I mean? Is there a little bit of an obligation or a pressure to feel like, okay, I got to actually talk. This kid might never hear that he could potentially become a millionaire unless I tell mm-hmm. him. You know, like is there any of that potential pressure whenever you have to talk to these guys? I think a, <clears throat> a lot of that when people label you OG. Unk or coach that comes with the responsibility and that's giving them game the game of life first because coming up there to play football naturally okay yeah that's that's a given but to give them some advice or to, to let them see guys that's done it on a professional level that's been been in the Super Bowl stuff like that that comes from the same humble beginnings that as they come from that that in itself is way more changing life changing than just go out here practicing yeah. Uh, drills. So. Yeah, just knowing it can happen, yeah. I think, is a big deal. Yeah. You know, because it's like a belief, like an opportunity. And whenever you are talking to them or around them, I assume they're like, okay, this guy made it. I can. I remember thinking to myself, because I never, at our high school, I don't know. I don't know if anybody went D1 in football. I don't know how many people, like normally people just kind of stay in our school. And I was always like, man, I want to be fucking rich, dude. Like how, <laughs> who do I, and we didn't have a lot of, we, my parents weren't really friends with any wealthy people. It was actually the complete opposite. They hated them. But I was like, I, my dad's first boss, his name was D Clark. And D doesn't know this, but I saw him and I saw his house and I saw like the way he talked and how he had joke. And he, he was the first person I saw. And that was like probably a teenager or late teenager. I was like, okay, so this is how, a uber successful person can operate okay it's not like it is on tv where they have to have a suit you have to be this slap dick you like you don't have to do that like this is a person that i can look at okay hilarious all right seems to be cool gets along with people you can make it out there i think that is a huge thing and that's why as those numbers grow i mean chuck pagano's coaching these high school kids yeah that is fucking it's insane the opportunity uh, you're presenting a, a pretty funny story when you're talking to these kids, like my uh, five years removed from the game, so they was pretty young when I was playing, so they vaguely remember vaguely remember me. But I was telling them they would think I came from a big, yeah. big bells and whistles high school, went to Alabama or Georgia type of deal. Like no, I went to high school, and one of my classmates was Gucci Mane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they like oh, because they know. Gucci burr. came from, yeah. from you know burr. from from the gutter yeah. you know burr. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they can now they can identify okay I came from humble beginnings just like you I wanted I had a goal so I had to set myself on the path to achieve that goal I was able to do that you go to college it doesn't matter what college you go to you just need an opportunity all you need is one the school that Alabama and them the uh, Black College National Champs they gave me the hill yeah I got one offer that particular year, 1999, and that was the last scholarship offer because the guy that they really wanted turned them down on National Signing Day, so they just had a surplus one. They offered it to me. Hey, I'll take it. Appreciate you. And uh, lo and behold, I was you know, fortunate enough to pursue my NFL dreams. Well, the by the way, fucking awesome. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, <laughs> oh, hey, awesome, dude. Yeah. Hey, were you and Gucci friends or no? I mean, we was cordial. I mean, he was a uh, uh, Boulder Chris. I'm East Atlanta, and uh, it was a lot of it was a lot of ignorant stuff going on. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know him. He knows me, and that's kind of hey, where it is. He came out of jail. They did. He came out of jail, just absolutely yeah, shredded. shredded up, T-ball. Uh, flat shows, yeah, all that stuff. Just that's that young, immature high school stuff. So. Yeah, I could imagine. But <laughs> East Atlanta, what zone? Zone? Zone six, man. Here we Come go. On. Hey, I'm sorry I even... Don't you know, do that. Don't you do that. Well, I'm sorry I even... That's on me 100%. But yeah. your story is an awesome one. And yeah. I think that is... Now, I don't want to say that that's a normal thing in the NFL, but there's a lot of stories in the NFL. And right. I think that is why the NFL is so awesome. Because right. you're from Zone 6. Peyton, 
okay? <laughs> was born and raised to be an NFL quarterback by an NFL quarterback in an NFL family. I think he was in a commercial when he was like four years old. <laughs> but then whenever you get into a locker room, it's like, okay, we are trying to win. That's all we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. We got to figure this the fuck out, yeah. right? And that, that is, by we the way. Oh, uh, FIFO. Figure it the fuck, fuck out. out. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's kind of what it is. Mm. But that's why, like, an NFL <clears throat> locker room is so incredible. Just, just you two, by the way. Mm-hmm. And that is such a beautiful depiction of, like, here is people from two very, very, very different circumstances. I think you want better. Reggie Wayne is from across the tracks from Peyton. <laughs> Same city. Yeah. Same city. Same <laughs> city. Same yeah. city. Why go together to yeah. create two Hall of Fame careers? Yeah. It's Absolutely. just, yeah. that's why football is beautiful. It is. I was so lucky. I got into it late, you know, because I played mm-hmm. soccer or whatever. But man, I was always an NFL fan. Then once you get in there, it's like this thing is, this sport is the sport. That's, what yeah. that's, that's, that's ultimately what you miss about the game. I don't miss hitting quarterbacks, the, the, the aches and pains. I miss the locker room. That's yes. what you miss. Just like laughing at guys like this, <laughs> like, man. Just this, this dude, just silly, man. <laughs> Bro, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I, I feel like I was a pretty good energy boost. Yeah, I feel it was, like, it I feel was. like I, had, I was a pretty good. There was a couple times I had to read the room a little bit and like, all right, okay. all right, now time for me to fuck my pipe here. Well, Let me you get got it. guys that are for real funny, like yourself, and other guys just. They trying too hard. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah. yeah, but they get exposed in that locker oh, room real oh, they, quick. Yeah, real yeah. Quick. That is. If, if you get sensitive, uh, that we're gonna turn it up <laughs> some more. So what you gonna do? You gonna whoop us? What you gonna do? All right. So me and Clint yeah. session. Okay. And uh, he went to University of Pittsburgh. He his career ended because I think he had two concussions in one game. I think that is what happened Damn. with him. When he went down to Jacksonville, they paid him. He was the leader in tackles for the Colts for a long time. From pay- I mean, he this dude, dude, by striker. the way. Striker. Yeah. He, he was the, I remember him and Chris Johnson. I actually asked Chris Johnson about it. It was uh, in Tennessee. I think it was like the year where he went for 2K, I think. Mm-hmm. He... In first, first, no, first play. play, first play. First, you remember this? Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. 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 I his ass up. Oh my god! Because I remember sitting on the sideline, and uh, me and Clint had hung out a little bit. You know, we had uh, we had mutual interests. You know, in things outside of football. But the um, he uh, <laughs> he um, he murdered Chris Johnson, Oof. and it was. I think it was a couple of days before the game. We were like chatting or whatever. And he said that he knew what the first play of the game was going to be, or he knew when this what play it was going to be. And he said, when that happens, he wasn't just talking to me; it was like a group. <laughs> he said, when that happens, he said, I'm going with everything yeah. I got. I'm going with everything. And it might have been the first play. Yeah, he smacked the shit. I out couldn't of even, <laughs> I couldn't even fathom him in his head when he saw what he he. Oh, first play. Yeah. Here we, here we go. <laughs> and they, and by the way, we won that game. I don't think oh, yeah. Chris had more than 30 yards it was, or 40 yards. It was a complete situation. Tone setter. Yeah, it was yeah. a tone oh, oh, yeah. setter. But Absolutely. Clint Session is just another guy. Like, when you talk about that locker room, me and him should have never been friends or hung out. But, like, we <laughs> yeah. literally were. And it was it was one of those things where when I started doing stand-up or getting into stand-up, which, by the way, Robert said, first time you do a show, I'm front row. Uh, he said, whatever first show, mm-hmm. I'm going to do it. It was a couple years I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Well, you do it then. Like him, basically. Do it. You do it. I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So I do it or whatever. And walking on the stage, I literally thought to myself, I saw you. I saw Vinny. Gary mm-hmm. Brackett was there. I forget who else. Mm-hmm. There's a couple other OGs there. I literally walked on the stage, saw you guys, and I was like, oh, I've made those motherfuckers laugh. These, hey, these, these Indiana folks are going to be fucking <laughs> easy. Yeah. Like, it really is, though. Like in the locker room. You learn so much. Yes, sir. You learn so much. It shapes you so much. It does everything. It's awesome. And I was very lucky to be in a locker room with you, pal. Will you stick around another? You got to get out of here or no? No, I'm, I'm good. What you want to do? We got to get to a break. That's okay. what I got to do. Yeah. On the other side, I need you to rank your favorite quarterbacks that you have set. Yes. We'll do. Top three. Don't need a lot. Don't need like 20. I've, how many I'll, have you set? I already know. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure the internet knows how many. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hate them. <laughs> 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 oh, that's beautiful. All right, we got to get to a break. We're back in four minutes. Oh, also, I got big sources. Ooh. Oh, that's oh, actually, right. I got to say this right now. I, I should get to, I was going to do this earlier. Pretty big deal yesterday. Uh, news came out from a podcast called the DN, 
VR Broncos podcast. Uh, Romy Bean, I believe, is her name. She uh, works for CBS out in Denver. She told a story on there about how she had two different sets of sources, one from a golf course, one from a golf crew, uh, that John Elway and Aaron Rodgers had been golfing, seen golfing together, and we immediately were like, okay, allegedly this is true, but boy, if John Elway and Aaron are golfing together five hours, golf is a long time. There's a lot going on. And yeah. I think AJ said, well, that's tampering, I believe. And, was, <laughs> and we go, oh, they're just friends. Just, they're just quarterback. They're just friends or anything like that. Uh, and it, by the way, that on the internet became a big deal. Yeah. Huge. This became a big deal. It wasn't our story. We were just reporting what we had heard because we have a vested interest in this entire thing. Right. In this whole, with that going big, I, sources came to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so I have some sources. Maybe from the golf course, maybe not. Okay. Okay, but the source does have knowledge of the situation rather well. Same golf course, two different groups. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Two different groups. So they were at the same golf course, mm. but they were nowhere. Allegedly, now, my source told me tee times were very far apart. So there are a couple places on the course that they could have potentially had interactions <laughs> but couldn't have been long if it was okay oh, man golly that's, so the, that's brilliant what's that the, that <laughs> 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 yeah. like like we don't know what the hell i just want to let you know yeah. robert that's what sources told me now mm-hmm. sources told Romy something different mm-hmm. you take it out the source who told me would know though now that now that person though could be lying to me I'm not 100% sure I don't know the person at all previously mm-hmm. to this whole situation nope. but I did do a little okay, okay. so this person <laughs> would know but Incredible. could be lying to me I'm not 100% sure mm-hmm. I was told though that same course two different groups and I guess this course is a course that Notables would play at. Yeah, like people go to. Yeah, so they, th- what he was saying, or, or she, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like guess who there. I kind of, <laughs> kind of fucked that one up. Uh, this one, <laughs> you get it. It's a, it's a, it was a dude. All right. Yeah. Okay. Right, so yeah, okay, you, take you, all guess who out 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 <laughs> Does not does not have a mustache. Yeah. Like, glasses. Um, said so there there could be stories every day about people potentially at that course because of. The course it is. I Who's guess. golf? It's a nice yeah. golf course. Yeah, yeah, I guess. But it's also like one of those ones. It's not easy to like mm-hmm. get into. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nothing more than, I guess, two ships passing in the night. Then. I guess. I mean, it could be like they were on hole one and hole eighteen. Oh, yeah. no. okay. Could have been. I was not told this. Something this is just like pure that. speculative. Like but then they could have going been, to number two T. Yeah. Just getting done Di- on eighteen. T. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Could be like that. But I don't know the golf course. No. Yeah. No. And I don't know how the layout is. <laughs> and I don't know if John and Aaron like each other, but I did hear what Romy said. I'm not as I her people probably aren't lying to her. I don't know if old buddy's lying to me, but I was told same course, different group. So okay. I guess that kind of buries that whole thing. And that was months ago, by the way. Yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah, months not and months recently. ago. No, no, no. Which is kind of bullshit, I guess, because we had such a cool story there, and we're probably going to run with it today. Instead, you know what we're talking about on the other side? What's that? Tim Tebow's in the AFC South. <laughs> yeah! Today! Woo! We'll talk to Robert Mathis about that on the other side. we got about four minutes. one 833 4 McAfee. We'll talk to you as well. Can't wait for it. Cheers. Well, hello, sensual piano keys. You sound incredibly inspirational and motivational. Big announcement coming from our company. You know, throughout my entire life, I've made decisions that people have said, ooh, that is stupid. You've read about them, you heard about them. When I was in high school, I went to an underground poker game, won 1,400 bucks, flew myself down to Miami, won a kicking contest, and got a scholarship to West Virginia the next day. I turned my back on soccer that day. Everybody said, you're an idiot. Why are you doing that? You have more schools looking at you for soccer than you do for football. What are you thinking? Fast forward eight years with the Indianapolis Colts, and I was on top of the world, top of the mountain. How's the view? Not too shabby. And when I was at the top of my game, I decided, you know what? I'm going to pursue some other stuff. My friends and I are going to go to work on the internet. We're going to try to chase fulfillment as opposed to just a paycheck. And there were some interesting responses from people of power in the sporting world. Make Make them tear the uniform off of you. 
Look, somebody needs to stage an intervention. People who know this guy, get to him now. Make him put his helmet back on and get to camp. Oh no, there's no intervention, Wilbon. No, no, no. Here we are three years after that date, and it's a celebration, bitches! Cut the music! Let's hand out some bags to the boys. For the boys. For the boys. Oh my god. Are you home? Alright, come out the front door. What's up, dude? <laughs> what is this? What's this? Oh, you son of a bitch. What the fuck? Fuck you. Oh, yeah. That is the bag of money. Uh, fan deal went through. There's fifty thousand dollars in there for it. Here's a backpack with uh, fifty thousand dollars in it. Oh, fifty thousand. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes, yeah, so there's fifty thousand dollars in there. Yes, yeah, so there's fifty thousand dollars. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Let's go. You brought it back. <laughs> oh man. Let's, Let's, go. Let's go, dude. Let's go. I appreciate you, buddy. Yo, this is. Appreciate you, dude. We did it. Couldn't have done it without you. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude, it's a fuck ton of money. <laughs> you guys, <right? laughs> When I asked Dan Patrick for some advice, he told me always take care of the boys. But, and you should know, those people that are there with you, that their value cannot be overstated and should not be overstated. So Mike Wilbon, they didn't hold my jersey on me. They didn't hold my helmet on me. We didn't have an intervention. What we have is a celebration because when you bet on yourself, sometimes you hit for big. And for us, the only place we'll bet for the next couple years in an exclusive deal, FanDuel backed the Brinks truck up to our office and we have never been more thankful, more excited and more together as we promote the greatest sports book on planet Earth. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. To that show, you all know by now that this office runs on Celsius. We've been loving Celsius for the last few months. Robert, you got to try one for the first time. How good is that? Yeah, it's pretty damn good. It man. is, isn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah. He got the diesel as well, the heat, which is the big boy, okay? Yeah. I can't wait till you send uh, that whole thing to my house. Ooh! <laughs> okay. The fridge. You got the yeah, house. it's fully stocked, man. That's I, nice. That's nice. I was nice. told this is one-on-one, man. That's nice. I was told this is one-on-one. I'm going nice. to have to make another one, you know? Man. I'm going to have to make another I'll nice. talk to him about it. Really hey, nice. Hey, I will talk to him. <laughs> make a couple <laughs> calls. Listen, I'm on your side. Listen, yeah, I won't I survive if this thing This thing is here. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, there's a lot of people that want one of these. Robert Mathis, we'll get one of these motherfuckers sent to you. <laughs> Hell yeah. At all. Uh, Celsius is the premium alternative to traditional energy drinks. Better for you and better tasting. It has zero sugar and is made with premium ingredients like ginger, green tea, and guarana. Oh. Okay. Did I say that right, Z, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Guarana. Uh, Ray Mysterio and I... Uh, Spoke Spanish a little bit back and forth to each other. No Ooh. way. Yeah, yeah. How, how tall is he really? Huh? How tall is he? He's exactly how, how tall you think he is. How, oh, how, how short is he? he th- he's exactly how short <laughs> you think he is. If you, if you think, whatever you think, you're probably right. You're probably right. Maybe coolest dude of all time. All time. Like legit. Hey. Yeah, I used to love Ray oh, Mysterio. He's like, still. Watch, oh, man. Hey, he's still doing all the same shit. Still got I, it. I don't know how he's still doing all the same shit. He's in great shit. He is a cool, cool dude. But he was. Uh, he was telling me about something like in the past and I like, you know, I was like, oh, I can say that for sure. So he's yeah, oh, so you're saying, and I try to say it back and he goes, no. 
and I was like, I was like, he was like, shorter. It was a good moment, but Guarana. None of the bad stuff, just the essential energy you need. Celsius was created to help people live fit, exceed their goals, and elevate their everyday lives. We have them in the office and love them. Head to celsius.com forward slash buy dash locate to find Celsius near you today. WrestleMania Backlash Sunday. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we were there all day. It yeah. was the end of the week. You know, I needed a little Celsius. Yeah. Foxy had to drive the Bentley around town. Oh, wow. wow. What this a bummer, kid, Foxy. This kid's driving. He said, oh, I had to go to seven places. I told him, go to Celsius.com forward slash buy dash locate. You won't have to drive around the whole damn city to find the best energy drink there is. Con. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what'd you do? You just driving around a car. Yeah, yeah. I was just joyriding. Put a yeah, thousand he, miles on that I was going to say, he probably yeah. found the Celsius first stop and he was like, you know what? I got the Bentley. I might as well drive around a little hey, bit. Hey, old Benjamin <laughs> Bentley. I did a little upgrade to the engine. 700 ponies. Wow. <laughs> you hear me, Robert? Why? <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know. Because I don't. <laughs> the issue now we have is it is heavy. You know, that thing's a yacht. Mm -hmm. So when you get going, if you potentially look around the bend and you see a lot of red lights, you know, like potential brakes or something like that, it's hard to get the train slow. <laughs> it is not easy oh, yeah. getting the old train to slow <laughs> down. All right, some breaking news today. It is officially uh, Tebow time in Duval Connie, Woo! Yeah. he's wearing number 85. So he said, I've always dreamed of being a tight end. I'm gonna go with the traditional standard old 85, even though I could be 15, could be five, could be whatever. Tim Tebow is officially back with Urban Meyer in Jacksonville. Uh, initial video has been leaked of him walking to practice in his jersey. He does not look like how we we seen Tim down no, at Top uh, Golf. No, no, no. When we seen him at Top Golf, he was a bodybuilder. Yeah. He was he was mess. Now he's put on. It looks like he's put on a little bit because he knows he's going to be in the trenches battling it out with people like the Sandman down here. <laughs> Robert, we talked to Ninkovich. Do you ever, you you got respect yeah, for Rob, Yeah, Nink. Rob, yeah, well, absolutely. Nink wants Purdue, by the way. I think he comes back to town every once in a while. You should get him up at the gridiron. Oh, yeah, tell him to come holler at me. Yeah, I think we absolutely should do that. He was talking about how, um, <clears throat> he said, right now I've been out of the league, okay? I could put on some pads and I could throw around Tim Tebow, is what Rob <laughs> Ninkovich said. Right now he said I could do that. So we had him on the show Man. immediately afterwards. And I go, right, listen, if you don't think he's going, if you think he's taking somebody's opportunity, cool. I understand why you're mad. Like, uh, that's a very, it's, you know, everybody knows we're in a network business. The world is a network business. This way, he's a Jacksonville hero, but I can understand that. But you saying you're going to throw around Tim Tebow? He then told us that he's, what, benching 370 yeah, right I mean, now if he wants to or whatever. Do you think there is a certain thing with Tebow that, you know, like defensive ends, uh, anybody that he potentially has to block, maybe even a corner. Like, has that become something now? Like, I got blocked by Tim Tebow. I couldn't even imagine the film room in this training camp or OTA if a guy potentially gets, you know, teabagged by Tebow yeah. and or, or that whole thing. This is not going to be like an easy thing for him, oh, right? You just got pancaked by a quarterback. Can't happen. <laughs> That's, I don't care what his position it, it, right now. It, you're a, he's a quarterback. You cannot get pancaked by Tim Tebow. <laughs> no. Hey, but Tebow but, might uh, be able to do it. But at the same time, weights don't hit back. <laughs> yeah, that's so, true. Yeah, so you can bench press whatever you want, but when you put the pads on, pads hit back. How come, why do you think some of the basketball players were able to make the transition into tight end? And why is everybody automatically assuming that Tebow won't be able to? Is it because Tebow is like 6'1 or 6'2 and these guys are normally like 6'4, 6'5? Or what do you think it is about it? And do you think... That Tebow has any chance of success here at tight end. Oh, his you work. can't you can't give him a guarantee, but just <clears throat> in your head, you haven't seen him. You haven't seen we none of us have seen him do anything. Right. So there's obviously a chance for him to do it. But in your head, do you think do you see like an actual like he's going to be on the squad making plays? Man, I'll say this: him being in those trenches is going. That's a that's a it's a different beast. Uh, you, there is no quarterback protections. There is no no extra referees watching you. So guys are going to be gunning for him. But at the same time, I do know him to have a tremendous work ethic. So if it's something that he wants to be great in, he's going to work towards it. But I'm waiting to watch the film. So I can't really just jump out there because at the same time, he's a quarterback and – you cannot get blocked by a quarterback. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> let's talk about a quarterback potentially becoming a tight end. You just said it, which is what we said. Like, this is Tim Tebow. Okay, yeah. okay? like, let's – I understand that 
people think he's going to fail, and he might, by the way. He might completely oh, yeah. fail at this. He couldn't hit a curveball, I guess. Can't hit a curveball. This guy is the biggest hater of team. No, 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 I'm the this baseball guy. field. I'm <laughs> the baseball field. Why? Because he fucking stuck. <laughs> okay, all right, okay, easy. You need to take it easy there. But it is, it is like, it's Tebow, it's Tebow. I just assume it's going to work. But also, he's... He's going to sell out that stadium. We've been down there, dude. There you go. Hey, they had tarps over that entire top. You remember that? Go. So they couldn't black out the uh, TV uh, local because they had to have a sellout or whatever. Khan has to feel like right now with Urban coming in, Trevor Lawrence coming in. He's like, hey, let's kickstart this business now. Not that that isn't enough to motivate people, but the Jacksonville legend of Tebow going back in there. That's the way this whole thing it is a business. I, I think that is something people forget a sometimes. Business transaction. That's all it is. Pure and simple. <laughs> have you ever have you ever seen? No, Indy, we didn't really do any of that, I don't think. Where you thought like, oh, that's strictly a business. Well, there was a bunch of that, I guess. <laughs> I, no, I, uh, not here. I can't say that I've. I mean, outside of you, I, that's that's about it. I, oh, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if that's why I got brought in? All right, we need to bring this fucking guy in. What is he? Well, he's dumb in the locker room. We know that. It'll be yeah. good. Uh, let's get some phone calls, shall we, Robert? Do you mind that? No, not at all. Let's go to Rocket in Denver. This is Rocket, dude. This guy's Ooh. quick. When he was a kid, mm-hmm. he used to fucking smoke everybody. Gunners. Rocket, what's going on, dude? What is going on? Uh, Rocket, was I right with everything I said there? When you were a kid, you were yeah, the fastest? Yeah, that is my name. Oh, that's your actual name? Actual name. No, not a nickname. My actual name. Got crazy parents. Huh. Not a bad name. Hey, Rocco. Right. What do you want to talk <laughs> about, man? Rocco? What do you want to talk about? Rocco! <laughs> Rocky! Hey, Rock! Rocket! That's awesome. <laughs> Who was, uh, were you a, a, uh... Were you an athlete? I assume you have to be an athlete with the name Rocket. You kind of get, get tossed into that? Uh, I mean, I, I tried football freshman year and fucking sucked. It, so. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, hey, Rocket, you do what you got to do. I assume you're going to be an accountant or maybe even a, a CEO one day. This is CEO Rocket Johnson here. Let's go. Okay, can't wait for that. Rocket, what do you want to talk about, pal? I want to talk. I'm, I'm a Broncos fan, but I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about a man I think will be Humble. the MVP of this upcoming season. I think he's been disrespected his entire career, and he's coming to a team where he has a chance to be the best he's ever been, and that is Ryan Fitzpatrick. I want to get your thoughts on <laughs> Here that. we go. Okay. Here we go, Rocket. Um, that Washington football team, they are very good, Robert. I don't know if you've seen that. Chase Young, by the way, seems to be a guy. He uh, – he picked up that football and just ran in a yeah. touchdown. It's like he had an extendo. It's dog. almost like he's they're, a dog. He's yeah. a dog. they're building a team around him. That team was allegedly in on all the quarterbacks that were potentially available. They signed Ryan Fitzmagic. Your thoughts on Ryan Fitzmagic or a journeyman quarterback going into a game against the Ryan Fitzmagic? What are you thinking about? How do you, how do you, is that change anything? Ooh. Uh, MVP rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> But uh, I've had the pleasure to play against uh, Fitz Magic, as you, as you called him. Yeah, yeah. And he's a problem. When he's hot, he's he's scorching. But uh, you kind of want to get the, the cold <laughs> Fitz Patrick, not the Fitz Magic. So. Oh, you're saying there is that every <laughs> yeah, once in a while? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's uh, like we used to say, the, the Chicago Bears quarterback, 06. Grossman. Good Grossman, bad Grossman. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Super Bowl, we had bad. And that was good for us. <laughs> <laughs> is, that some, is that a conversation that's happening, though, during the week of preparation? Oh, yeah, it's, absolutely. And mm-hmm. what are the coaches saying? What are you guys saying? It's like, hey, he's going to give us one? Like that type of – is that like uh, – Absolutely. If you have to prepare for the the good Rex Grossman, but uh, hope for the bad one. So you go into game, don't know, just stick to your guns and uh, – we got the bad one, so we was all right with that. But there's probably numerous quarterbacks that are like that. I assume, especially oh, yeah. in the AFC South over the years, there was a lot of things yeah. turning around, and we don't have to name them specifically unless you want to, and you can do that. I cannot do that. <laughs> you can do that to whoever you want, basically. Nah, but I ain't going to do that. But you got a lot of uh, – I say they're more streaky quarterbacks than they are consistent. When I think consi- – I've, 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 I've been spoiled. Yeah. Peyton and Andrew, those are consistent guys. They're going to be great every week, week in and week out. Uh you got Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers. These guys that you know, you know what you're going to get, and that's you better bring your A game. Yeah, I think everybody thinks that those guys just grow on trees. No. By the way, no, nope. they, they do not. Nope. It, it is one of those, just like the Packers situation. That I don't know if you saw how this whole thing panned out because you're coaching or whatever, but like Schefter literally t- said that. 
it was accumulation of information and I mm -hmm. just so happened to drop it on draft day, but it became like the biggest story of all time. It turned into Packers fans telling Aaron Rodgers he's a piece of shit and to get out. I mean, it, it became a big deal or whatever, but people just yeah. think like having an Aaron Rodgers, you're like, oh, we'll get another one because they had Brett Favre and we yeah. were very lucky. Pa Andrew was immediately after Peyton or whatever, right. but man, if you don't get one of those guys, yeah. you're not going to win. Patrick Mahomes, for instance, here's a guy. Kansas City found a guy somehow. Mm -hmm. Good for them. Congratulations for them. They told Alex Smith to get out there it's not easy to find a guy though I, I think that is a very big misconception at this because everybody is going to be great every whenever they come into the nfl because their mm -hmm. college career this dude's going to be the greatest this kyle pitts is already number four tight end in the nfl right now <laughs> pro football focus rated kyle pitts as the number four tight end in the nfl right now by the way i believe kyle pitts has a chance to be great okay i, I have Nothing but love for Kyle yeah. Pitts. Congrats, Kyle Pitts. Love Kyle no, Pitts. No, but to put no, him in the top no, five tight ends in the NFL no. right now over guys that have played for 10 years in the NFL is, is what's wrong with everything that's going on in the I don't, world. I don't know him, but he's a rook-ass rook. Yes. He, hasn't, he has not taken a snap yet, so until then, you cannot put them in the top five. Nothing. That's what I think you so, know. too, because we have no idea what's going to happen. Kyle Pitts, by the way, and I think this is the difference between being in a locker room yeah. and like covering the game. I don't think if you're if you're just a even if you're a media person that's around every day, okay, and you and by the way, I, I consider a lot of them to have a vast amount of knowledge on the NFL. It is vital to the NFL's success to have media that is invested and everything like that. But unless you've been in the meetings where you've seen or, or seen somebody who looks like the greatest athlete of all time in high school and college, they were dominant. And then you watch them in like two practices, like, oh, this guy fucking stinks. Like, why, why, why is this guy? You have no idea what's going to happen. That happens so, man, all the time, bro. He is hot garbage. Yes. Like, who is this guy? Yeah. You know? And he looks this good. Hype, the hype machine. So. Uh, I don't know Kyle like the tight end, but uh, I hear a lot of good things about him. But until then, I'm going to wait till you put it on the field. I hope he's great. I yeah. hope he's great. But the quarterback thing is very difficult. Zito says he has an entire quarterback list he wants to put up there. Go ahead, Zito. Toss that thing up there. It's interesting. Hey, is this uh, – what is this? Here is a breakdown of – the people Mathis has sacked, adding oh, up yeah. to 128 <laughs> and a half career sacks. By the way, congrats on that. Yeah, That's a lot. Geez. So you got five on Tom Who's Brady. That first guy. Yeah, Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah. So let's go through that right now. We have a few minutes here. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady was the guy. As soon as you walked in here, you grabbed his Patriots hat, you threw it on the ground. Yeah. Wild. And hell yeah. You told him to go to hell last time. I, I think you told him next time you see him, you're going to beat him up. So let's hope that happens at some point today. But wow. Tom Brady I just was. Just might slap all this stuff off his dick. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. He yeah. lost no, a cactus no, 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 plant. Yeah, yeah, you already no, lost no, the cactus. That. But Tom Brady, obviously, your favorite sack of all time there? Uh, I have a top three. Okay, top three. I'm going to go at number three, Steve McNair. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Legend. Because, uh, you know, swag legend, uh, uh, frat, frat brother, all that stuff, good stuff. But he was the reason John Tierling and the coach, uh, Co Coach Dungey and Bill Polian, they drafted me because he was giving us problems. Uh, and they was like, well, we need – Two guys, Dwight and myself, to come get the, the chase him, to go get him, and uh, to be able to, I guess, do your job. You know, just that was that was kind of that was very instrumental. Well, and by the way, yeah, that, the yeah. reason why we're going to bring in somebody else, we have Dwight here, but we need another one. Yeah. The reason why we're doing this is because Steve McNair. When do they tell you that? Do they ever they, tell you that? No, they told me that on my initial visit, but you know, you kind of take that with a grain of salt until you draft me. So, and he told me again. After draft day, John Tierling, uh, the greatest D-line coach of all time. Rest yeah. in peace, legend. Absolutely. Well, he was like, hey, we need you to go get Steve McNair. <laughs> we we, we want to win this division. You tackling years. Steve that no. first time, though, oh, yeah. it had to be like, it was like you were right. Yeah. Hey, you were right, Bill. <laughs> yeah. No, he shook me off the first time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's yeah. number two? Number two, uh, a guy that I fully expect to see at the Ring of Honor, November 28th, my friend, my teammate, uh, former opponent, Peyton Manning. Oh, yeah. red jerseys in practice. Yeah. Don't touch Peyton Dude, in practice. Hey, you, you better not get within three yards or you're going to be cut. <laughs> I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Uh, he's in the conversation with greatest of all time. Yes. That's that's my man. That's Mount my Rushmore man. for sure. Absolutely. And it Absolutely. was also, it led to, I think, a safety. Ewall hopped on it or didn't. I don't remember. It was yeah, in the, I think his hair was out of bounds. So that's why it wasn't. Uh, Should have been a touchdown. It was, yeah, I think so. Yeah, something like that. Should have been a touchdown. But that night, they were, I think the, it, for whatever reason, it got brought back up into social media the other day. Right. 
That was an awesome night, man. It was. Hey, was it? it I was. mean, that was an incredible night for you. I think the player of the game was that that blow up shot on the side. Come on, <laughs> yeah. come on. I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, Pat gonna strike a little bit. Okay. So, so you know, when that happens, when I make a tackle, and I try to explain this to people, it's like that is. I failed at everything I was supposed to do. If I'm making the tackle, my job was terrible. Like, whatever I just did did not work, okay? I'm getting paid to pin. I'm getting paid to go deep. And I'm trying to set up the defense mm -hmm. to be in, like, a successful position. That is literally what my job was <laughs> as kickoff guy and punting guy. So every time I made a tackle, it was like I was not happy, first of all. Like, <laughs> I was not happy that this was happening because I fucked over the team. Uh, I, I potentially uh, did not do my job anywhere near what I was supposed to, and ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm not going to get paid because this shit happened. Like, it's not yeah. like uh, this is yeah. not a this is not a good thing. So, all my <laughs> tackles, I was rather angry on, right? And that one blow up Trendon Holiday, and that was just a luck thing, you know. Like, literally, he's very fast. I'm running maximum speed after I hit a spin move on a guy, but I was running maximum speed, so that could have been just a miss completely there. I <laughs> I got lucky, but I turn around, obviously. And I see their sideline, and I'm a little like, oh, my God, you're like, what Whoa. the fuck? And I watch the replay. I'm like, oh, okay, fucking right. <laughs> so then I jog off. Everybody coming on the field at that time, all the defense, who should be pissed at me, right, because I just gave Peyton the ball at 50, basically. Yeah, it was supposed to, Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. I had six inside the 20, though. I got you. You got a safety. <laughs> all right. You're wrong. You got a, you got a safety. <laughs> all right. All right so it's, uh, I mean, whatever. But the, the entire defense, I think Pat Anger, I think he ran and he hit the top of my head like off oh, so while he was running on. I believe I forget who it was. It Ah, I forget who it was. Somebody came and like punched me in the chest, and I was just like, "Oh, everybody's pumped. Okay, this is cool. This is hey, I fucked you over a little bit here. You got the, one of the greatest of all time with very short field. So good luck out there." And then they show the replay. The entire place went bonkers. Oh, yeah. I was about to puke. I think I was still a little dizzy or whatever. And I'm like, "I should be getting fired for what just happened." And yeah. It seems to be the complete opposite no, of this whole thing. That was awesome. That was a good blow up shot. It was fundamentally unsound. You was out of position, but whatever you had, you threw it into it, and you and you made the tackle, man. Thank you. And it I, turned out okay. Thank you. And by the way, you know, uh, Joel Dreesen and I have talked on the internet about this. He mm -hmm. was supposed to block me on that, you know, and he came up to me and I think he thought maybe brother-in-law. We were brother-in-law or whatever. Oh. And I hit him with a literal spin move. I hit him with a literal spin move and made the tackle. And at the end, you actually see him come up and on the sideline. You see him do this or whatever because he knows in film, like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, the kicker. Yeah, this is gonna happen. Like, this is gonna happen. But I did have somebody blocking me, so I think there was a little bit of respect. Maybe he and I have had a full interaction because I kind of fucked him over in the, in the, you know, because we did kind of have agreement. Like, the agreement. Yeah, yeah. You, you broke the, you broke the there's contract. A, there's a moral code there, that I kind of, and I do feel bad about it. I want to let them know but that hit is one that is top five worst forms by me like i feel like i had a couple of wrapped up helmet to helmet a little bit but man i i feel yeah. like i i you ran through them now thank yeah. you thank well, you, you ran through them. thank you but i used that ice pick on yeah. that okay yeah, 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 yeah. i used that ice pick Good on coaching that. point yeah from the defensive you know what oh, i mean yeah. had to go down there jt <laughs> taught me that and then the number one has to be the guy huh yeah oh uh, it pains me to see it oh man don't, don't, don't. Okay, I won't. Uh, Tom Brady. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say? You were going to say grace of all time? Uh, ah. He told me not to, so I, 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 I'm going to I'm gonna fall back on that. You were thinking but, about it. But it was, it's so hard to, to get to him because he releases the football so fast and he knows exactly where he's going with it. And to be able to get to him throughout the, like the course of my career, throughout the big rivalries that we had, I mean, he's, he's hitting shoulders tops. To get to him, we were playing them every year. By the way, yeah, man, it was it was for between us, uh, Patriots and uh, Pittsburgh. We used to pass that AFC crown around, man. So mm -hmm. it was always you got to beat New England because you don't want you don't want to have to go up there in January. You know what I'm saying with uh, the elements and and and, and, oh, and, yeah. and the foolishness that that, that comes <laughs> and along the with mass holes. Uh -huh. Hey, they never get talked about yeah. as an environment of fans. By the way, everybody always says like Seattle's loud and like shit like that. I understand, but the mass holes, they conduct themselves in a fashion that is disruptive to the away. Team. It's rowdy. I up mean, there. it is a place. Yeah. And um, they by the way, <laughs> for, uh, yeah. All right, they're yeah. average, you're saying. Yeah, I mean they 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 is what they is. So, <laughs> you know, whatever. Are you uh yeah. you know, week four, Tom and Bill? That's gonna be that's gonna be just like uh, whatever week we, we played the Broncos. Bingo. But uh, I hope Tom go up there and, and drop 100 on them. Well, how come? How come? Um, 
just because player? I just don't like the Patriots. So you did? You, you don't should. mind Tom down in Tampa or no? Come again? You hate Tom in Tampa or no? No, it's it's a respect because uh, I would, and I talked to Bruce Arians. I, my love for him far outweighs my disdain for for Tom. But I don't not I don't dislike him as a man. You know, he's cool as hell. Yeah, but he's <laughs> everything I heard. He blocked me from two or three rings, and I don't, <laughs> yeah. I, don't I don't like that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hey, still I'm still a little blown over that. Hey, the yeah. guy from Zone Six, yeah, who got a throwaway scholarship to Alabama, A&M, yeah, come on, who had to get drafted to the Colts, play special <laughs> teams, kill people on kickoffs, yeah. then work his way in there, <laughs> lost out on two to three rings because of this one particular player. Yeah, what does punk ass? Yeah, California. <laughs> hey, I understand. Listen, yeah. I understand. Uh, okay, we got 45 seconds till hour two starts. Uh, Robert, what are you? Uh, what are you doing? You want to hang out? You want to leave? What do you want to do? Yeah, I'll hang out for a quick sec, man. So okay, it's so, pretty cool. So we'll hit a commercial break probably like 20 minutes into this hour. So you got like another 19 minutes. Is that cool? Yes. AJ Hawk will be joining us on the other side of this little video, too. Okay. You know him? You know you guys are meet each other? Yeah, man. I knew AJ, man. Last time you were on the show, yeah. you were on the show yeah. together, too. Mm-hmm. Respect for his game, man. Hey, his oh, nose. Yeah. Have you seen his nose? No, I haven't. So his like nose that. is so big. And I think, and I haven't asked him, because <laughs> his helmet, because he used to... He was the oh, Cobra. Yeah. He's the crown guy. He got the Scotty Pippen, huh? Yeah. Hour oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, two starts in three, two, two, one. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show. Hour two on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio, hey, and YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show begins right now. Yeah. Whole first hour was spent alongside Robert Mathis. What a cool conversation. Yeah. yeah. We actually blew right through the Sirius commercial break. We apologize. He was in ranking his top three opponents to sack. You cannot interrupt that. Nope. Plus, we got into a little story time. He'll be joining us on the other side of this current break he just ran to do. I assume he'll be back soon. Uh, joining us right now from Ohio, ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hall. Wow. Wow. AJ, and Robert says he's got a lot of respect for your game, pal. Oh, good. Hey, believe me, I have a ton of respect for, for his game. What is he coaching now? So he's he's got these camps. It's called the Gridiron Gang, basically. And it started with him coaching pass rushers, and they were just on a field. It, it literally felt like it was him and, like, 10 kids, maybe 15 kids, and they were just going to work. And then as he continued to do it, he started bringing in other positions and other things. And they've gotten to the point now where it is massive. They got sponsorships paying for kids that could never afford it. I mean, it is huge. He's doing really well. I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly impressed by the growth because that the amount of work that he has had to put in probably for this is fucking massive, I'd assume. Oh, just like the, the logistics of trying to do stuff like this. The amount of emails you have to send and forms you have to get people to fill out. Yeah, that was what I would not be expecting. Hey, how many forms have you had to fill out, you, Robert? Fucking, yeah, for this camp stuff. I would assume there's a lot of, we were just talking about the amount of busy bullshit work you've probably had to do with this well, whole thing. I mean, we got, we got the assistance for that shit. Just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Young man. <laughs> I mean, at first... <laughs> when we first started out, man, it was like. Can you can you talk into the microphone? It was some bullshit, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, joining us, gotta... ladies and gentlemen, Robert Mathis. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, uh, AJ's here. He said he's obviously a big fan of yours. Um, <laughs> wait, he's going into the Colts Ring of Honor this year. What's the date? November twenty eighth. Okay. So do you have your speech already ready? What are you going to do? Are you going to count for the previous Colts Ring of Honor inductions that we've learned that there is an echo, a little bit of an echo? The you know, there's a lot of things I think you have to prepare for for this moment. Oh, uh, I kind of watched him um, study film on Dwight. What he did last time, Smart. he spoke. He spoke for like a minute because uh, uh, Mr. Ursay he kind of he kind of you know yeah. ran the show. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rely on Mr. Ursay running the show. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. I'm a I'm a coat for life and. Give me my jacket. I think it was your last game. Yeah. It was your last game, um, last play. You come off the field. 
and the Jumbotron had zoomed in on you, and you literally pointed at the cold on your helmet, I think, and I think you kissed it, and then you sat down, and it was like a moment where it was like, <laughs> like for me, as like a teammate, it was like, that's the end of a fucking era yeah, there, you know? Yeah. And I think the fans also saw it as well. You took mm -hmm. a tremendous amount of pride in the fact that you were only playing for the Colts, right? Yeah, uh, 14 years in one place, and I got to retire on my own terms. And that's something very few people, not even the, the, the GOAT, the GOATs, uh, Tom Brady, Peyton, they, they didn't even do this. So in order to just play 14 years, get to announce my retirement and then go out and play the game and then get, get the reception from the fans. What else could you do but be loyal to the shoot? Man? That was, AJ, it used to be like that. That was the thought, like, hey, I'm going to be on the same team and then business always gets in the way, you know? And now I think it's so much different. Don't you think, AJ? Like, now I'm not 100% sure that that is necessarily the goal anymore. You know, like, that yeah. used to be the goal. I'm not sure that is anymore just because of how the business has changed immensely. I'm not saying it's right. the generational thing. I just think the business has changed. Don't you think, AJ? I mean, yeah, I think guys coming in probably that are rookies that are just knew we drafted they're probably not thinking hey this is i'm going to be here for the next 12 to 14 years this is what i'm only going to play here they're probably obviously they they would love to everyone's everyone if you could you'd like to do it like robert but that's very difficult to do so yeah i wonder if kids if, i don't want to say kids i'm guessing like guys getting drafted as rookies aren't technically young men. kids but they are to me yeah i wonder if what they're if that ever even crosses their mind like hey i'm going to try to play for one organization Hi, robert your thoughts on like because there was a change in the locker room as like from the beginning of my career to the end of my career. And I'm not I'm not 100% sure if you noticed it as well whenever you were in there. The rules of the game was changing. Right. It felt like society was changing. Right. Everything was kind of changing. Like, And I happened to be in a locker room during it. Ha the thought of, and we talked about this a little bit last hour, and I can't wait to hear AJ's thoughts on this too. Kyle Pitts was rated the number four tight end in the NFL today by Pro Football Good. He should. He deserves it. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, AJ. But, uh, by the way, Robert said the same thing, basically in different fashion. But um, the, all the hype, the hype, you know. You that's not his fault, by the way. Hey, that's it's not, not Kyle Pitts' fault that they put him on that. We list. agree it's not Kyle Pitts' fault. We don't have to bury Kyle Pitts. We think Kyle Pitts will be good, but this is part of the problem in this whole thing. So, like, people, you know, there's a lot of avenues to speak. And I, by the way, this is going to sound like a massively hypocritical thing to say, but mm -hmm. I feel like when I spoke, it was never like, um, you know, I was I was never getting hyped up like, hey, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, before ever really doing anything. Mm -hmm. Now it feels like everything you said this is like a hype machine. Mm -hmm. I saw you post something about a young pass rusher, and I, I think you actually said to him, if this dude can shut his ass up and, yeah. and can work and do it, he could be great. Do you think that there are going to be like any old school type guys? Because it feels like everybody wants these new guys like, hey, listen, you can make massive amounts of money on the internet mm -hmm. you should be doing this type of stuff you should be doing this so i don't want to ever blame the <clears throat> players for this type of stuff but it really is i'm not 100 percent sure it's conducive to being the absolute best football player you could possibly be whenever that other shit's happening just mm -hmm. am i wrong in thinking that and do you see this as well no uh i don't because the social media uh it is it's just it's a hype machine so i think it's going to boil down boil down to the type of person that the player just what he is uh, if he's a humble guy, eventually it is that's gonna show. Uh, you were talking, you were referring to uh, Popeye Williams. He's one of my guys, one of my uh, student athletes. He's been with us for a few years, and to see his growth, he's coming to his senior year in high school. And like I, I tell him all the time, hey, don't don't believe your your shit don't stink. You know, <laughs> just because yeah. people tell you, that, no, you're gonna get to college and you're gonna be a freshman all over again. And if you're fortunate enough, you get to the NFL, you're going to be a rook-ass rook. So you have to prove yourself each and every time. And uh, if you get caught up in uh, people kissing your ass, you're going to fall by the wayside. And I think that's why your camps are so important, by the way. Absolutely. Oh, I'm going to talk shit. Today. Yeah. <laughs> who's, who's that AAU coach? Who's that AAU coach who said, like, uh, he, he, I forget, it was a basketball. He's a player. Beal, maybe? Might have been yeah, Bradley, yeah, Beal. Bradley Beal. Bradley yeah. Beal said, uh, everybody thinks you're all going to the NBA. To get to the NBA, one of y'all motherfuckers is going to have to take my spot. And ain't none of you yeah. can beat me in one-on-one. -on -one. So I would assume that whenever you are talking to these guys at these camps, mm -hmm. and you're like, hey, listen, I'm a couple years out, but if you want to get in, you would have to take my spot. So like, it, it, that type of realization is something. Because now it feels like, AJ, everybody's going to be the greatest. Everybody's going to be the greatest at all times. It's like, in two years from now, a lot of these people we're talking about, a majority of them, 
Research tells us a majority of the people that are getting hyped right now are gonna stink. And I don't like it. I want them all to make a billion dollars. But research tells us that there is a good chance these guys are gonna stink, AJ. And I, I feel like the hype at some point, will it ever curve? Will we ever learn from it? Or will it just continue to be something? And we're a part of this too. Hey, let's not, oh, yeah, fucking, of course. let's not fucking get it twisted. We are a part of this as well. But I'm just saying, it can, I don't know. I just think it could affect things, AJ. I mean, it could. There's, there's always gonna be outliers i mean look at trevor lawrence that guy's kind of a throwback doesn't he see he's not caught up in the hype he has he's been the man from day one since he was probably since he could throw a football and you haven't seen him out there self-promoting all over the place whether whether you agree or disagree like i don't think he's a, well, however you go about it good just i think do whatever suits your personality but he's kind of a he doesn't seem to be caught up in everything. Yeah, and, and by the way, you can make a lot of money off the field if you use the platforms that you're given to make oh, things. Yeah. So I have nothing but respect for it. But I do think you have to keep the main thing. The main thing. The main thing. Because right. as that thing grows, as do you, just naturally. Like, for instance, LaMelo Ball the other night with the Hornets. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you make it in the playoffs, dude. Every game's primetime TV. Like, And I'm not saying that he was not trying to win but i don't know if he necessarily has that mindset like oh, okay i'm gonna be on national tv every single night if i make the playoffs i should be wanting to ball out here because that'll help everything else grow now he has made immense amount of cash in his whole life i should i'm not telling him how to do it but i feel like that's one of those things where people and I'm, who knows but the content is everything it's like yeah but also like getting on national TV every single night is also a big deal. You know, it also helps out the whole thing. I think it all go, kind of goes with each other, but I think we're experiencing quite a change in professional sports and in the world. Mm -hmm. And we'll just talk dumb shit into microphones every day while we go about doing that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, AJ, uh, any updates on the Aaron Rodgers situation you'd like to tell me and Robert Mathis or anything like that? I wish I had something for you, Pat. No, nothing. Come so what on. did you find out, though, about the golfing situation? Okay, so I did talk about this in the first hour. And Robert, uh, he learned about it as everybody else did as well. He had some interesting thoughts on it. But <laughs> I was told was somebody who would know, okay? I, I had to go. I never met this person before, but this person would know. I looked into it a little bit. Uh, they said same golf course, different groups, different time. And at this particular golf course, they, the, the allegations of people being with each other could be made at a, a, a very often. And I would assume if John Elway and Aaron Rodgers are golfing at this course, it's probably a pretty nice course. They said they were not in the same group or whatever, basically. They could have potentially had conversations on the course somewhere. Who knows? But it couldn't have been for long, allegedly, is what I was told. I could be lied to. Romy, her sources could have lied to her as well. I mean, who knows with this entire thing? But from what I gathered is, it's a fucking nice golf course. Yeah. Uh -huh. That is all I've gathered from this entire thing, is this is a nice golf course AJ yeah they what you gathered is that they both played on that golf course that day but not in the same group that's what I was told could have been what about the poker though she said like her boyfriend's friend or something played poker and John Elway and A-Rod sat down at the table okay so I did <laughs> that guy may be full of shit uh-huh there's a chance Maybe. That, that could be a little bit what did I say yesterday you don't you don't see him playing poker. I, play poker. <laughs> I don't see any unless like they knew the people. I don't think they just joined random poker games at golf clubs. Okay, so this might be wrong. Okay, we've been we've been we've been covering wrong stories all fucking month. And you're saying all allegedly. Right. Yeah, and we said allegedly, but I did get attacked out there and then it led so much to said source to send me information and I did reveal earlier mm -hmm. it was a man, not a woman. Oh. Um yeah, oh. I didn't mean to. I wanted to keep my source secret, but I fucked it up. Uh, Tim Tebow is officially a member of the Jaguars as of this morning, AJ Hawk. Uh, Robert Mathis said the same thing that we all kind of said is it's Tim Tebow. He refused to give a guess on how Tebow would do. He said, I would like to see the tape, okay? I would I would like to see his hand in the dirt, basically. Ain't that right, Robert? Go ahead. Absolutely. You just think like, hey, maybe he could. Maybe he can, but it's going to be who knows. I need to see the film. No, but I need That's a pundit, okay? I need you to say, <laughs> I need you to say he's going to be Super Bowl champion and MVP tight end. He's going to take Kyle Pitts' spot. Why the or, hell, hold on. Why the hell would I say that? And he's in, he's in the AFC South. No, they're going to suck, and I hope they suck, and I don't care about them sucking. I don't okay. care. Yeah, okay, so, oh, yeah. so Robert Mathis said Tebow's going to suck. AJ, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how this whole thing would go, and they could potentially clip that and say that you said that. You did not say that, but I think any prejudgment right now of Tim Tebow 
I don't know. Just the NFL is so hard to predict on what's going to click and what isn't. I honestly believe that every single year. This guy could be great. He could stink. He looks much different than he looked down at Top Golf. Yeah. I will say. Looks like he's gotten a little bit more barely ready to, you know, mix it up in the trenches with the Sandman down here, Robert <laughs> Mathis. Your thoughts, AJ, on this becoming official and and how do you see this thing? He looks bigger than that guy. I don't yeah. Know that oh guy yeah. Is. I mean, he looks good. I mean, obviously, physically, Timmy always looks good. I feel like, yeah, like Robert, yeah. And like Ninkovich said on your show last week, you can't hide. Like, there's nowhere to hide. And I think even in – I don't know what the OTAs will look like, but eventually you're going to put the pads on, and I guess that's when you get to know, like, what – how he can be down in the trenches kind of as a tight end. I agree. I mean, I think we're all saying the same things, except for the people You'll know that... early on, though. I think they'll know pretty quickly one way or the other. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, like today? You think they'll know today, or you think it'll uh, come? No, no, not today, but I mean, Thanks. they'll definitely have a good idea from OTAs and minicamp, but then once you get to training camp, within the first five or six days, I'm sure they have a feeling of like where, how, what the, his potential ceiling may be. Robert, what was that thing? Hey, when the pads come on, right? That was like the, in our locker room. Oh yeah. It, it was, I mean, I assume that's everywhere, but there was a couple years where people had big OTAs. Hey, yeah. they had some big OTAs. People that I don't think I even knew existed, but they came in and on seven on seven, they were fucking balling. And then mm -hmm. first day of pads come. E and that, you're like, hey, wait till them pads come on. Yeah, he won't. <laughs> he won't. Oh, this guy's really good, huh? This guy's really good. Okay. And then that first day of pads, you know, I think everybody has to kind of get psyched up for it. But the defense seems to be much more ready for it than the offense on a regular basis. But, boy, that first day of pads, you see some people disappear real quick. And I'm like, I'm like, hey, listen, I don't blame you. I wouldn't fucking do it either. But you're a much different player now than you were just a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the game, I guess, right? you got to be physical in that whole thing. Yeah. When a, the threat of physicality is present. Oh, you see a whole lot of people tuck their tail. So that's why we love when the pads come on. That's always everybody's always juiced up for that for that particular practice because now we you about my favorite quote. One of my favorite quotes is from Ti. <laughs> he says, "You want to overthrow me, you gonna have to show me." Oh, and you in OTAs is you know. The coaches like to say we're in underwear, run around in underwear. Yeah, but they gas up some they guys. Do. The yeah. coaches gas up guys in OTAs yeah. too. Oh, yeah. oh, this guy yeah. gonna get your job. Yeah. This guy gonna oh, get yeah. your job. Absolutely. And so it's it's amazing, man. That first practice, padded practice, a whole lot of guys gonna have to lay it down. <laughs> yeah. uh, this ain't yeah. the NFL ain't for this guy. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good OTAs. Right. Thanks for coming. That was a good run, though, dude. Mm -hmm. All right, see ya. You're not the only one, by the way. There's been hundreds and hundreds <laughs> yeah. that have come through this door. I don't Long know list. every other place. It's just the way it goes. Thank God I didn't have to do any of that bullshit with anybody. <laughs> but you're thinking this will be early, huh, with Tim Tebow. We'll find out immediately upon contact. I think he's going to have a little bit more rope than the normal tight end uh, convert. So... And it's because it's business. It's, it's business, and you. They're can't. gonna sell that stadium. Yeah. They yeah. have never yeah. done Bainers, that. Yeah. They, yeah. they have never done that ever. And it's we don't. Hey, we we don't like that it's that way. Nope. Hey, I wish every person that was qualified for a position got the position. The yeah. most qualified person yeah. got every position, yeah. not just in football but in life. Like yeah. I wish that happened. But here in reality, that's just not how it fucking works. Nope. Okay. So it's like I understand. Hey, we can yell at a goddamn wall if we want to. It's just like. You're not going to get anything back. Uh -uh. We're, we're going to change it, though, every day. Hell yeah. Every day, we're going to be ones that are going to try to change it. We, we hope in the future that it's changed. But now, Tebow's selling out that stadium. Can yeah. he block? We will find out. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Julio Jones allegedly on the trade block. Robert Mathis, I don't know if you have done this, mm. but I have. I have texted Chris Ballard directly and told him, what the fuck are we doing? We got, we got the cap space. Uh, T.Y., could you imagine T.Y. with Julio on the other side? Oh. Carson Wentz looks unbelievable, by the way. They got footage of him from OTAs. They were back in the building. He looks happy. He looks pumped. Him and T.Y. have thrown together a couple mm. times, numerous times now. They like each other. They love each other. T.Y.'s excited excited about it it feels like if we were to get a now Paris Campbell's back rocking the one he looks good out there uh Michael Pittman's back rocking two ones he comes back off a 19 yard uh rookie season with one touchdown he's a guy who if he gets going could be good but Julio's available your thoughts Robert and if you were a team would you go try to get him absolutely uh if you go back a year we we, we drafted up a guy in the first round from the San Francisco 40, 49ers. Oh, to force Buckner. Yeah, he was yeah, good. Yeah. He played out. He panned out. I think Julio's worth a first round pick. Me too. Mm -hmm. hey, I'm it, just gonna throw that out there. Yeah, man. but think about this. It's gonna it's gonna come back. They're gonna trade him. And it's gonna be like a, a third and a fourth or something. Yeah. And every I'm fan okay. base in the I'm okay with that. 
every fan base in the NFL will be. Yeah. But that's what's going to happen for some reason. And G, I guess it's the contract. Yeah. And post June 1, I think, is when the action will potentially happen. I think uh, the Atlanta Falcons save like $15 million if they trade them post June 1. Just like, by the way, I'm not saying it. Especially because John Elway and Aaron were not golfing Don't together. Don't say Myers it. Says, no, they weren't. But post June one, Aaron Rodgers' contract gets very different as well. Uh oh. So who know about that? But Julio's a guy. You get him on a t- like you get him on your. T- and that's how I feel. I'm not GM, but you. I'm happy to hear you agree with me there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that John Elway, Aaron Rodgers. And a golf course kind of sounds like John Elway, Peyton Manning in the bowling alley or something whoa, whoa, like that. Whoa, right? no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Is that right? They win the Super Bowl. Like, hey, we got to we got to even the playing field a little bit. And I think and I think Julio is that guy. You think they should go? You yeah. think uh, they should get on a golf course together, maybe in a bowling alley? Yeah, just uh, go eat some chicken wings or something. You know? <laughs> hey, Atlanta, Atlanta's got a great spread of places where you can watch. You oh, know, yeah. professionals do uh, yeah. incredible things on a stage, and then they have. Great chicken wings. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my God. The lemon peppers, man. Oh, Lou Will. <laughs> yeah, who was it? In Lou, the, Lou Will's lemon pepper. Yeah, uh, Lou wings. Lemon pepper got old buddy down in the NBA bubble in some trouble. And they, I, I think the people that were judging him were like, well, you haven't had those lemon pepper wings. <laughs> yeah. you I'll say outside Ale Emporium, nobody's touching Atlanta when it comes to the wings. Nobody. A- Ale Emporium, by the way, is here in Indiana. And yeah. it makes no sense how good their fucking wings them are. Damn, them damn Herman Nockies. Herman Nockies. Hey, yes. People are traveling to mm-hmm. this place to get these wings. But yeah, I've had some great... Me and Pac-Man had some... Uh, had some great wings about 2 30 3 a.m in atlanta after the uh, sugar bowl my freshman year in atlanta great night <laughs> those wings were unbelievable Where, where'd you get them from well it was this animal place i don't know it was pretty cool oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was this animal place it was pretty cool i was the only yeah. caucasian within a uh i think maybe 10 mile radius maybe their coach <laughs> jb was in there but boy it was awesome mm. it was a it was a great time down there julio though aj could you imagine? Now let's just do a couple, a couple teams. Let's just do a couple teams. Say, could you imagine Julio? Could you imagine Julio on the Green Bay fucking Packers? No. I'm just saying. Could you imagine? No. Why? There's only one other team. Yeah. Colts. Colts. Yeah. No, but AJ, yeah. I'll ask AJ then. AJ, not you. <laughs> don't, don't ask him. What are you asking him for? <laughs> AJ, I love that he's pointing out, by the way, because this is where the team yeah. is. Hey, AJ, right now is right here to me. But no. AJ. Could you imagine him with Aaron? Could you imagine him in like 10, if you go to 10 different places, it's like Julio's on the squad. They're, they're now in it because- anywhere, anywhere, anywhere you go. You can put him on any team in the league right now and, and say that same thing for Julio. Like that's, I think the dude is special, yeah. absolutely. And I feel like wide receivers and DBs, when they're asked to talk about uh, like wideouts, they always go aside from Julio. I, I feel like that is always yeah. like, uh, just like you did with the quarterback, like most important positions to a team, you're like, aside from the quarterback, like this is how it goes. Absolutely. With wide receivers, they're always like, aside from the fucking guy who is <laughs> a D end, mm-hmm. who runs yeah. faster than everybody, every, this is kind of how it goes. I just feel like that's a move you got to make. I might be wrong though. All right, well, let's get to a break here, shall we? Uh, Robert Mathis, cannot thank you enough for stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it. I, I really do. Anytime, anytime I see Robert Mathis pop up on my phone, I'm always like, "Fucking legend!" Just <laughs> yes. to me, dude. It's really oh, cool. And what you're doing with Gridiron Gang is really, really awesome. I appreciate. How you, can buddy. people learn about it, help out, and everything like that? The original GridironGang.com. Okay, and just look into it, learn yeah, about it. Look into it, learn about it. Uh, mission statements, quotes, and training. Yeah, it's a good thing, man. It's for the free. It's not. It's not for hire. So it's. We're just trying to get it done and do good, great things in the city and spread abroad. Do you think uh, I could potentially go train up there for? I actually think you should come up and just participate in a training session. I think that I think the, the, the fans of Indiana would love that. Well, I understand what you're doing right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I don't want to have to vomit. Okay, uh, hey, you, could, you could do your pass set for Robert. Oh, let, yeah. Let Robert rush you a few times. Yeah, let me send one of my high school kids at you. Hey, listen, that guy you're talking about right there, if you he better shut his ass up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, because when, when I hit him with that screen, you know, oh, yeah. when I hit with the back slaps, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, he's <laughs> falling over. Absolutely. Yeah, right. I get bullied right now. I'm. This is the smallest I've been in a long time. This is the smallest I've been in a long time. Robert used to see my body fluxes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Salah, first day back. <laughs> first day back from OTA, first day back or whatever. I had a good off season, you know, I'm walking in there. I just sit down, I'm getting changed. I'm like, oh, great to be back. Hey, what's up guys? Good to see you, about to get in there. Salah, and then just walk by, like, oh my God. Got to lose some weight. We weighed in, oh. we weighed in near each other a couple different times. He would get on the, the scale, like 235 or whatever. That's what you played, right? Yes, sir. And then there would be like a good week where I get on there and it's like 239. He's that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Robert, I fucking love you, dude. Good oh, luck man. with everything. We appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, appreciate you. Colts Ring of Honor member, future Ring of Honor member, I guess, as of November 28th, and future NFL Hall of Famer, Robert Mack. Yeah! We'll be back in four minutes. This is Thursday, May 20th. Cheers. I just saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that is from Jim Ursay. What was that? And have you ever been in that plane before? I, I thought it was like a, the team plane to fly all of the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> I, uh, literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome. But uh, look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make. and. No hard feelings, and uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here, uh, it, it was a great, great gesture. A lot of room for me and Marshall. We were throwing the football. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. Pretty cool father-son weekend. By the way, as he's moving from event to event right now, <laughs> you are the best, dude. Where are you headed right now? I'm going to the game. I'm going to the game. I got Lynch. I got Fanica. I got these guys in the background. Boys, so, uh, how you? Congratulations! Yeah. Congratulations, boys! All right, Peyton. Oh, hey, there he is, Marshall. I hope you enjoyed that plane, pal. Hey, Peyton. <laughs> last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady? You becoming friends with him? Uh, it was interesting to watch. Oh yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> 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 All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured. I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic off season, no time to meet with his receivers. He met with his coaches illegally by breaking into Byron Leverage's house. <laughs> So besides that, uh, it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish, and uh, he deserves all the credit. His leadership is, is what put the Bucks in this game today, and uh, I have great respect for him because I know how hard it is, but uh, he deserves all the credit. Hey, how did you know Red 18 was coming? Pat, I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was <laughs> over 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. Nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the... Some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sh you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton. Oh, yeah! Sir? Ah, good evening. Ah. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Welcome to Friday Night Smackdown Throwback Edition.
This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Look at that. That was a good one. Ooh, that was a good crossfade. Yeah. I had to add it to the list of, you know, songs coming next. Yeah, that's right. Well done. That, that list. Is it really low? Oh, it sounds good. Does it? Now it does. It came in a little low. Something's going on back here. Can you cut to that camera? Zito and Jared doing something right here. I mean, something's going on. Zito, what did you just learn? Something happened? Uh, I just forgot to call AJ. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the show. It stinks. We know it. You don't have to tell us. Joining us now from Ohio, college football national champion and NFL of... No. NFL Super Bowl champion, not Hall of Famer yet. Should be, guys. Should be. Yeah. Especially yeah. after Should the Zach's on. mom thing. Yeah. yeah. AJ Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Zach's mom. Hey. What's up? Robert's a cool dude, man. Yeah. Robert's a, he, he's a, uh, it looks like he can still play. Well, Oops. so he just, he told me I'm four, because he, whenever we walked out of here, I saw him, he got a little stiff, you know what I mean? Like, as he was standing up, I'm like, you getting old, dude? He's like, I got a sleeve on my knee right now. I'm like, what? Are you all right? He's like, I'm 40. I was like, damn, I didn't know you were for you. Look, happy birthday. You look I missed your birthday. Happy birthday. You look really good. He um, you know, and this won't get talked about ever either, but like those OGs in the locker room, when they like okay somebody in the locker room, it's a big deal. Like when Robert okayed me in the locker room, which was very early, which was cool because he walked into a situation I was at, and I think he learned a lot about me quickly. <laughs> and was like, okay, that that is one of those things where I am forever indebted to Robert Mathis for making my transition into the locker room in the NFL very, very smooth, basically, because he helped me out in that whole thing. Well, don't, I, I can imagine a guy like Robert, if you're not one of his guys like it may it might not be a whole lot of fun to yeah. be around. it might get a little uncomfortable I, I think the first time i actually saw him and i told the story of him jumping rope but the first time he and i were at a uh, outside the building but at the same place together he walked in and i think the first thing i said to him was hey do you just scare the fuck out of all the white people everywhere you go? <laughs> and he just started dying laughing. And he was like, who is this dude? And, uh, and Clint Session, I think, at the time was like, oh, just wait, just wait. <laughs> yeah. it, it was so it was very Joseph Adai, Clint, Robert, and then Peyton, and then Vinatieri, and then, like, I was very Dallas. I was very, that locker room was awesome. That locker room was very, very cool. And I'm not sure, you know, that's something that's going to continue to carry. I think the locker room's changing. That dynamic is continuing to change, and it has to to survive with society and everything like that. But, man, there's something really dope about that locker room when everybody is, you know, tight. You can be really good. And that's why I've always said the biggest X factor that never gets talked about is how much a team likes each other. If a team hates each other, it's very obvious. And, it, and by the way, you might not see it. You might not see it. But when it shows up, it does. And that's, like, that's the moment exactly. You know what I'm saying, AJ? And even if they don't, hate each other if they're not like super tight and they it's just different it's just different on like on game day on the field what they'll go through and practice together and it, I, i've been lucky i feel like a lot most teams i've Me ever too. been on i don't feel like there's been much animosity back and forth but you can definitely see it like if there's a a couple people that don't get along on, on either side or whatever or there's some say there's two or three guys in a position group and they start talking about their, their coach or another coach or something like it can trickle through the whole team and be a cancer man and by the way I think that's why you and me both are in this is the world like quarterback competitions public quarterback competitions like not good like it's not mm -hmm. good for the locker room now it might be good for the player okay it might bring out the best in them okay way to go but for the locker room i feel like that is the only position that it's like okay we don't even have a guy we do have a guy we like this guy they like that guy it's like not having it i feel like it's having a, it's like you have a Two interim head, interim head coaches or something. If you don't have a set quarterback, you're trying to figure it out still. And you're automatically going to disappoint somebody with your decision, you know. Yep. And what if you like, just uh, what if you're a receiver? What if you go catch a you catch a ball and you score and seven on or something? Oh wait, hold on. He dapped this guy up, but you didn't dap me up, the other quarterback, when you scored earlier. Yeah, and then by the way, might bring the best out of guys right in the locker room. You might the quarterbacks might be more likely to go dap and like do more stuff like that. That also happens potentially too. But I just think naturally people are going to get a favorite. And if their favorite isn't chosen for whatever reason, then they're going to immediately lose some trust in the decision makers because it's like, what are you seeing that I, because I'm here and this is the guy. And then he, there's other people who probably like the guy that's picked too, and they're feeling the exact same. It's like, I don't know. I think it's stupid, but what, I'm not a head coach or a GM, so maybe I'm. Sometimes you have, I mean, I guess sometimes you do have to do that. 
I mean, if you don't if you don't have your franchise dude or you're not drafting one overall and you, you draft Trevor Lawrence, yeah, what? sometimes you are forced into that. But I, I would assume most coaches, most GMs and owners – do whatever they can to not have to deal with that down the line. Hey, Jalen Hurts said, I'm I fucking yeah. rent is due every day, That's dude. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready to compete. I'll do what I got to do. Do we Who have started any... that? Did JJ start that? Uh, what is it? Success is least, least yeah. not owned, and uh -huh. rent is due every single day or whatever. I, I don't know if he said every single day or whatever, but. Gary V has something like that, too. Well, no, he just wants you to take five seconds out of your day every oh, day. Geez. Imagine. To do what? Make pretend. Think about don't, one of your loved ones. You know, don't say shot in the face. Whoa. Look at my town boys come into the studio and all of a sudden my that's happening. God. Come on. Said that. I didn't guys, say it. With your stupid hats, you guys come in here and all of a sudden you guys come in here and now Connor's starting to say things that are, by the way, I was taking out of context what you just yeah. said. Yeah. No, it's all about perspective. That's what, are what you I was. one of the V I, friends? I, I was an asshole. I'm not a V friend. No, I'm not. He didn't invite me to the you group. Didn't but say, you didn't finish. What, do you, what did he say? What is it? No, Tony finished it. I would never say that into a microphone, but uh, it's all about perspective and that's the same thing tying it back to the quarterbacks. You know? yeah, since we're here, I'm a Gary V guy. Okay, I've met Gary V. Me too. I want to hear. I want to hear the the wisdom. I need. Can someone finish it, please? Gary V. In a long answer that was clipped to the internet, did appear to say, <laughs> "Think about your family getting shot in the face or something yep. like that." Five minutes, five minutes every day. It's good for you. And that was clipped, obviously, on the internet. Five minutes. That's a long time. Long yeah, time. Exactly. I, I don't know if I've thought about anything for five minutes straight ever. <laughs> I do it in the shower because the tears do start flowing and it's good for you. Yeah, because it's a perspective. It was a longer speech where he said basically like put things in perspective, you know, what it could so be. To say like, hey, it could be worse? I think so, yeah. There you go. I could like what I could just okay. Let me uh, let me just try this. Okay, I'm hold on, hold on. I, let me ask a that's question. Worse than what's going on right now. Let me, now, let me. I don't have to have a dead. I don't have to kill my wife to to think oh, like oh, life no, could the, be worse. No, no, that's, no, not, that's, not, what, that's not what it said. There's, There's levels. levels. There's levels. I'm sorry. Too. I'm not getting you. We can move on. I'm sorry. I don't understand. Someone don't be you. sorry. Someone yeah, send yeah, you the video. Yeah, okay, you don't just like you're right I'll send the clip to you, AJ. No, please. send the full clip, please. Not just the out of context. I think I think AJ just wants the clip of what. Yeah. He needs to hear. No, no, full, he needs to hear the full clip. Oh, I wake up and watch the ten second clip every day. That's that's, that's not the, the clip, clip though. I mean, but I know the long clip. I know the point of it. Hey, perspective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's answer some phone calls. Jalen Hurts well, though. He said, "I'm open for competition." Yeah. Do we have any idea if J will we ever have any idea if Jalen Hurts? Is a good quarterback or not? Like this is this is my initial thought. It's like okay, he's ready to wear. I'm not above competition. Rents due every day. It's like okay, I love that about Jalen. Jalen, obviously, a guy that went over, left Alabama, went to Oklahoma, competed, won his job there. You know, last year Carson, the whole situation with Doug and Howie and everything going on in Philly, where there seemed to be more gasoline thrown on a situation than that independent wrestler that got his dick lit on fire where they uh, just yeah. emptied the entire body. That's what it felt like the entire building of the Eagles was two people that have a statue about them have been kicked out of town the quarterback they paid 100 million to has been traded to Indianapolis everything seems to be burning down and Jalen's sitting there and at the beginning of the offseason after Carson was traded it was alleged to be said now we don't know what's real and what isn't real but he was to be acted as if he was the starter that was allegedly the messaging from management this is before Sirianni becomes the head coach I yep. think I'm not sure the timing but I think it's before then then they hire Sirianni they do their thing he has that press conference massive blunder then it comes out and it's like hey there is going to be competition Jalen's not the starter it's like okay so Jalen was told he's the starter just like Andy Dalton kind of was and then afterwards he's like it's competition and to be fair Jalen hasn't really won okay their team hasn't been good I assume he's expecting to have to compete for a job to be a starter in the NFL but let's say the glimpses of greatness that we saw from Jalen last year, which there were, and there was also some rookie quarterback decisions that were made. What if their team continues to stink? Does Jalen ever really get an opportunity to be great? And that's the most vital thing about situations being situational. Like when you go to the San Francisco 49ers with Shanahan and Lynch and you're Trey Lynch, uh, and that entire team is built and ready to go. Yeah. It's like you have a much different world than what Jalen Hurts has had over yeah. there in Philly. And that's just the way the world is. I wish it wasn't like that. But I, that Eagles situation, Jalen in particular, like who knows how that thing plays out, AJ? Yeah, I think he's saying the right things there. Like yeah. he, he doesn't expect the job being given to him, even though I'm sure he will take the majority of the snaps with the ones throughout their whole offseason and training camp. But if he's good, though, even if their team around him stinks, like you say, 
he'll still show like he can let it we can see if there's potential that he's the guy look at joe burrow what he did in cincinnati True. before he got hurt like you definitely have a lot of hope for cincinnati if joe is fully healthy I think. hey joe all systems go, dude. That's right. Yep. All systems go. What does that mean? He's ready to go right now. He can play a game. No, 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 Week one, dude. Week one. So he's on track. All right, cool. He's on track for me. No, no, no. It's all, all, all systems go. Let's go. go. Good, 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 good. Let's not forget about the other Joe, though. Smoking all Joe systems Flacco go. will be the Eagles' quarterback week one. <laughs> True. <laughs> I, I did see there was a lot of chatter about old Joe Flacco going yeah, over I mean, there. Come on. Hey, he's still playing. That guy loves the game. Oh, yeah. He has had to battle, not only just, you know, in – locker rooms and quarterback rooms and for his position in different Denver, New York, I mean, now Philly, uh, Baltimore, obviously, he was very successful, got paid there. He has to really love the game, though, to stick around. Now, granted, everybody can say he loves the paycheck, which I agree, that's probably good as well, but Joe Flacco turned into an internet meme a long time ago, and he's still chugging along, and he's friend of the show, former guest of the yeah, show. Uh-huh. Right. I'm a big Joe Flacco fan, AJ. I'm a big hey. Joe Flacco fan. You know, when he decided to finally speak up a little bit in yeah. the media uh, this past year or whatever, do you think he's going to – he may be a bit gun shy, I think, to, to open up. The first time Joe Flacco showed any leadership <laughs> publicly, <laughs> fucking John Elway was like, get out of here. Get him, get him out, out now. It was like the first time a quarterback said, like, what's going on right now is not good. Like, we got to fix this. We got to go. You know, a Super Bowl winning quarterback, a veteran quarterback, a guy you paid to bring in to be your quarterback. He finally publicly said what I think a lot of football fans were like pumped to hear Joe Flacco said. And then all of a sudden he's fucking, hey, you're on IR. And your back hurt. Get out. <laughs> See you later. Get out of here, dude. See you later. See ya. Let's go to Andrew in Arkansas. Yesterday, I said Arkansas. Okay, Mm -hmm. and immediately upon it leaving my mouth, I felt bad about it because uh, the people of Arkansas do not deserve that. I'd like to let everybody know that. But yesterday, a little doped up. I forgot that I said it by the end of the question, so I did not get around to saying I shouldn't have said that. But Arkansas, Andrew, how's it going? About the Kansas people too. Don't you have to apologize to them? I think you. Kansas came after Arkansas. Texarkana is a thing, so maybe that was like. No, it wasn't. (laughs) I fucked up. I shouldn't have done it because we've been to Arkansas numerous times. Love Arkansas. John, John Daly, Daly, Arkansas native, was leading the PGA Championship this morning, yeah. actually. Trending at one point. He had a scramble birdie on one, was in the lead of the whole goddamn thing. I have a lot of respect for Arkansas. Felt bad with the Arkansas, and I did get a couple tweets from Arkansas fans saying, you're better than that. Hey, cool. And I want to let you know, I am. I'm sorry. Uh, Andrew in Arkansas, what's going on, pal? Hey, guys, what's up? Just hanging out. What's up with you, dude? Hey, don't worry about your Kansas, Arkansas, Green. It's hot. All right, all right. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I've been li- I've been listening for a long time. You know, all the way back from the that lady in the stands that shit herself. Oh, to yeah. Johnny fucking Fox, oh, wow. girl. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. And uh, I seen your Vince McMahon impression. Mm-hmm. Fucking fantastic. Thank you. Okay. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> But you know what the, you know what they wanted. What? They wanted the old Stone Cold impression. What? Yeah, I'll do it. I appreciate. I don't have a Stone Cold impression. <laughs> I, I could though. Him. I thought he was gonna. Do, I wanted him to do it. Oh, I hung I think, up. Uh, I think he wanted to do it. Oh, uh, did he? Uh, Man, I thought he was leading. I thought he was leading me into it. Was yeah. if he was gonna do it, he would have just jumped right in, right? Don't you think? I don't know. No, Maybe I misread build, that. He was building it up. What do you mean? Couldn't you feel the the tension building? Like he was he was. Making us, it was suspenseful. I no, made, AJ, he was asking Pat to do it. No, thank you, Mick. Okay, boy, thank you. Baby, man, I oh, thought, boy, by the way, I normally have a pretty good read on situations. I think it's one of my, it's yeah. one of my strengths. Situational, yeah. Yeah, situations are situational, and normally I can read the situations that become situational before they are situational, mm-hmm. and that's one of my strengths. I get it from my mom. I think now my mom a little bit more. Um, uh, hmm. Pessimistic about people. I, I think okay. as soon as somebody does one thing, it's like <laughs> dead to me. That's nope. Sally. <laughs> Sally, like immediately, you know. Oh yeah, I, you don't have that at all. No, I, I feel like I give a little. I feel like I, I I'm I'm not scared to give a little a little bit more investigation. Okay. But boy, once I make that decision, it is tough to get back from. And I appreciate Sally for giving me that. You know, via okay. via the genes, I believe. Let's go to Jesse Donner and Camp Pendleton. What's going on, pal? Hey, what's going on, Pat, boys, AJ? Jesse, thank you for your service. Hey, thank you, you, Jesse. Hey. Which branch? Uh, Marine Corps. 
man, I'm pumped you said that, dude. I am pumped you said that's one of the only ones that we all know. Immediately upon hearing that, we have to yell loudly in there. Uh, thank you for your service, Jesse. Stay safe. Whatever the hell you do, man, don't die. We appreciate the hell you. What do you want to talk about? Hey, so I want to talk about uh, possible Julio Jones coming to the Colts and realizing that he's number 11. And we saw how Michael Pittman did Carson Wentz. I wonder if he pays homage to the great Julio Jones and allows him that number. Great question, Jesse. Uh, your thoughts on that, AJ? You think Julio and Pittman could figure it out? Because Pittman told TMZ, hey, Carson, I understand. <laughs> okay, you're almost an MVP one time. Oh, you won a Super Bowl, okay. <laughs> I caught 18 yards last year. Yeah, that's right. This is my, this is my jersey. I'm I got 11. one touchdown in the league, pal. Excuse me, pal. Welcome yeah. to my team. Slow down. I'm 11. I wonder if he would do that. I would assume he would I, not do that to Julio. <laughs> no, he I, would, would. I would imagine. Don't you think if Julio signs with that team, that Julio, Julio just walks to his locker and he expects a number 11 jersey to be hanging there in the Colts I, I, in his Colts locker room? Now I've been at the same blackjack table as Julio Jones before, he's a very nice person. Very, very nice person. I mean, he was a great blackjack player, by the way, from what I was, he was playing four hands, I was playing nice. two. I was playing two, he was playing four, and they were, they were big hands he was playing. And yeah. he was, by the way, big winnings was happening. Ooh, okay. I was very impressed with everything, but he was very nice to everybody that came up, you know, that whole thing. It was that, I do wonder though, if, if he did get traded to the Colts, if he saw, Guy he probably would have to get introduced to, you know, hi, how's it going? My name's Julio. Oh, Michael Pittman, nice to meet you. I assume he just takes that right off of his back and just goes, I'll take that. Hey, this is mine now. No the, way. The, I hate to break it. You have to peel Pittman's dead body. No. Baby. Yeah. I mean, if Pittman didn't give it to, to the starting quarterback, the guy's 100 yeah. plus million dollar contract, how does he give it to Julio? It also That's makes true. sense. Or at least let probably. Julio buy it. I think it's district. It, like, I don't. Do you think Julio would buy it from him if Pittman tried to make him pay? Oh, yeah. And is Pittman it's wearing tough. 11 because of Julio? Yeah. You know, so then it's like, oh, that whole thing, that whole conversation. I'll, I'll be excited to see what Michael Pittman does when Chris Ballard finally trades for Chris, Julio Jones, though. <laughs> nice. I'll see what happens. Might end up with a Bobby Rayburn situation. Well, that was that? Baseball movie. The fan actually was number 11. Didn't give that him was... his number. Crazy fan. Dead. I mean, yeah. yeah. What? It's an Robert, De Robert De Niro. It's a yeah. great movie. Yeah. Was oh. he wearing those lifts? His shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those shoes. Is that Wesley Snipes? Yeah. 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 Yeah, hey, good. Bobby! Who yeah. killed, but De Niro killed him? De Niro is the fan. Yes. Wow. No. In a sauna, right? Someone died in a sauna. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? What's, What's going on? What are you guys watching, what? dude? It's a great What's movie. What's a water boy? It's a classic. The Rookie. The movie. The the rookie. Classic. Seen there, been there. Don't rookie happen. of the year. Uh -huh. Here, here's good sports. Rudy. Watch Rudy. I love I'm talking Rudy. Bob De Niro, Rudy one of the greatest you know actors it. ever, Pat. You need to see it. Rudy does stink. Whoa. <laughs> It does. The I movie? Liked, I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. Oh. It's all bullshit. Hate it. I could write just some fucking fairy tale. Wait, wait till you see the, the field. Wait till you see the true story I write about a punter at West Virginia who goddamn scored five touchdowns one night. I mean, it's going to be a coming of age tale that people are going to like. Anybody could do it. It's like Rudy's all bullshit. This is yeah. what I've been told. Man. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Rudy's not all bullshit. If it's not, what are, hey, way get carried off. Yeah. That guy, they had to have known he was going to kill somebody just looking at him. <laughs> How did they not know this guy? It's not realistic. It's not realistic it's at easy. all. You're just a diehard baseball fan. Oh, that's the intern. Is this true? That is the intern. Hey, that's what happened. He worked at a social media, like, revolutionary merch store almost yeah. type thing yeah. that was in the same exact office that he was in for newspapers mm -hmm. like 30 what? years for 33 years his, his office yeah. was located where he was sitting as an intern at the age of 65 70 years old it was awesome and it turns out his boss's husband yeah. was just fucking everybody in town oh, oh, right. him in the oh, i can't believe he didn't just kill him though like they should have had a little bit of a tribute to <laughs> all of the oh. other de niro movies yeah. de niro's executed the guy at, in the office at the end of that thing like you know because it's all feel good family yeah. they should have ran the uh, credits you know so get the kids out you know because i think it was like a pg-13 mm -hmm. and then it should have had that guy standing there and de niro should have walked up quietly behind him and just shot him right in the head <laughs> gotcha <laughs> that would have been awesome like the irishman <laughs> Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been awesome. Maybe that's the extended cut we haven't seen. Yeah, you're right. Hey, we would like the editor to release that. Yeah. And that'd be that's good writing, by the way, if you have De Niro come in there and just fucking assassinate somebody at the end of it. Who yeah. definitely deserved it, by the way. Oh yeah, that sells tickets too. That's right. Let's go to Matt in Butte County, California, up there where Aaron Rodgers is from. Shout out to Aaron, by the way, with the COVID relief fund up there. Yeah. Hope everything's okay. Yeah. What do you want to talk about, Matt? 
T Mac and the boys. What's up? Just hanging out, dude. I was gifted a brain earlier. It's gold. I was trying to figure out what the fuck this thing is, but I do believe the frontal lobe and the left lobe is what I'm using right now to talk to you, pal. What do you want to talk about? I just want to talk about Aaron Rodgers, man. It's great to talk to you, longtime fan. Um, so I noticed that uh, every time you guys say Butte, but we're actually from Chico, California. That's where Aaron's from. And he went to Pleasant Valley High School. I went to a rival school, Chico High. So he's from there, but he is from Chico, not Butte. But uh, hey, I do yo. want to talk about cur current situation. I think he should get to greener pastures, get out of there. But I don't see it happening. And uh, I also want to say thanks for everything. And uh, even though you're a big-time Raider hater, I still love you, that's bud. Whoa! That's oh, not true. Come on, dude. That ain't true. That ain't true, oh, man. Oh, thanks oh, for the call there. Peyton Manning, uh, there was a headline on NFL.com, and it was our first real chance to give uh, the shout-out S-A mm -hmm. to NFL.com. It's the first time we got to do this after learning that HT is hat tip. S-A, officially from our show, will be shout-out. Mm. NFL.com. The headline says Peyton Manning hopes Aaron Rodgers stays in Green Bay. You read the article, see the actual quote. That's not accurate at all. Mm -mm. Nope. He says he hopes that they, he's hopeful they figure it out, but never said they figure out a contract for him to stay in Green Bay. He said he's always thought of Aaron in Green Bay, but he's hopeful that they figure it out because he loves watching Aaron play, basically. Mm -hmm. So the headline saying Peyton Manning hopes Aaron Rodgers stays in Green Bay, although I do assume that is what he hopes ultimately. He was cut by the Colts, by the way. People forget it wasn't like he was traded or anything like that. And Peyton is a big, like, game historian, loves the game. Uh, Peyton's places on ESPN Plus. I think that shows that, but that's how he is real life. He absolutely loves the NFL. I would assume he has a lot of respect for Aaron and Green Bay potentially being long term. But most that clip, that quote, I think from Peyton should have read, you know, Peyton wants to see Aaron Rodgers play football again. Yeah. That, that's basically what it is. And I think that's how we all feel at this point. I, I didn't read the article, but yeah, of course, like I'm sure Peyton has a lot of respect for Aaron, and Aaron respects Peyton a ton. And he would love to see him in Green Bay, but ultimately, like, Peyton probably doesn't care. Like, it doesn't change any facet of his life, really, if Aaron is in Green Bay or plays somewhere else. Well, if Aaron's not playing, he's probably on a golf course that Peyton probably is also yeah. a membership and maybe taking up his group spot there. Whoa. Something to think about. But he, he literally, you know, and this is something that since what Peyton went through, not that Peyton wouldn't know this because, like we said, the Robert Mathis, Peyton, since he's like three years old, has been, this guy's going to be an NFL quarterback. He knows the ins and outs of the NFL. He's been in a locker room since he was a kid, him and Eli and Cooper and everything. I mean, it's just one of those things, but Peyton's not going to talk about Aaron's business. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that headline right there says, Peyton Manning hopes Aaron stays in Green Bay. Then if you really, like, if you think, oh, so Peyton hopes that Aaron gets his contract done with Green Bay. It's like, no, I don't. Peyton's not going to speak about anybody's, anybody else's business because Peyton understands, like, hey, business, you got to do whatever the fuck you got to do. I, I, that's not what Peyton said, but I just hope he fucking plays. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's probably, that's kind of how he feels, but everybody's talking about this situation, AJ. Everybody on earth is still talking about yeah. this thing because there ain't shit else to talk about. And there's no news. Like, it, there's nothing happening with it, too. That's the thing. Like, there's yeah. no sides. Nobody's saying anything. Hammer Don, boys, how'd you guys do last night? You guys have been riding quite a heater as of late. You're handing out money on Hammer Don at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, youtube.com forward slash hammer Don, COVID Cowboy, Tone Diggs. You guys have been handing out money over there, huh? I did pretty well last night. Uh, 5 and 1. Gumpy, however, was 6 and 0. Oh, so. so you guys are 11 and 1 combined, right? Damn. Now? Yes, sir. And the day before was 3 and 0 oh and 4 and 0. Oh. Yeah, is this bullshit, though? <laughs> How are you? Have you guys cracked the coat? You're not like. No, 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 no. Oh, you're you're remaining humble. Yeah. And hey, you're still in the dirt. We're, Let's not get to the clouds yeah. where I'm at. Shout out Gary V. Fucking ass. Yeah, you you just ask. Oh, hey. We, te we do nah. sometimes get lucky on when you ask us for sure. Yeah, but but in sports gambling, if you're above like 55 percent or 60 percent. 55 is very good. You're allegedly like a professional in this whole thing. Which, yeah. by the way, I don't think there's ever been for how long where I've been you're, below. You have to show consistent. A long like a, time, AJ. Long time. Consistent record. Basically, yeah. we are currently the Otanis of the MLB betting world. Because you're only see, a month into this season. Let's see if it continues. But you guys, since turning your direct focus to gambling every mm -hmm. single day, which I feel like a bigger genius every single day <laughs> as, as the account continues to grow. Tone Diggs, COVID cowboy, had to go into his COVID cave, was so tired because he had COVID. <laughs> all he did all day was just find winners on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Prop bets, bets, trying to crack the code. He went, 
I think like 15 and 0 for like two days straight, and then he did it again throughout the entire COVID cave. Then he comes back in here, starts doing our show, starts you know preparing for the show and everything like that. His numbers start to fall off. So the immediate thought is like, we got to get this fucking Tony cash man. cow yeah. back into this thing. And you guys, there's no end in sight for this. It feels like, especially with Dumpy alongside, it feels like you yeah. guys are legit looking for the best bets every single day that I have nowhere near the time to dig to the balls deep of in FanDuel Sportsbook. We do our separate research, but every once in a while, we'll look at each other and be like, what do you what do you think about this one? And then like, if we're on the same side, we feel pretty good about it. If we're on separate sides, so so a lot of time I'll just be like, all right, we don't like that one. I'll stay away from that one. Also, this is a combined team effort. Smart. And it's not like, um, it's not like you guys are betting everything or just betting things you like. You guys are the trying final to- say? Does Diggs or Gumpy have the final say? No, 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 it's a team. No, no, we, a team AJ. we do go against each other quite a bit in here, but we don't like to. But it's not like you're betting everything. These are your best bets every day. Hammer yeah. down, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Like, YouTube.com forward slash hammer down. That's down, D-A-H-N. They should be selling their picks, to be honest with you. Yeah. But instead, free show every single day. I've been rolling into money. Foxy's been trying to fuck us. AJ, hour yeah. three's on the other side. Any thoughts? Uh, I watched some of the hockey last night. I saw the Capitals goalie. That was a rough way to end that. Yeah, yeah oh. and Ovechkin almost took his head off, too, that goalie. I, I, I assume he's going to bounce back in the next game as well. Hour three, Ian Rappaport will join us. We'll okay. see you in six minutes. The goalie finds his way, and Sidney Crosby, oh. the captain, the greatest of all time, according to Pat McAfee, <laughs> he wins tonight, and that is my lock of the night. The Pittsburgh Penguins money line. Hell, you might as well take them minus one and a half oh, no. at plus 202. There's no chance. Oh, no. Zero percent chance yeah, the Penguins the lose tonight. What's this all about? <laughs> I mean, I've been listening to you for the last 48 hours. Talk about the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, I'm not talking Man, that's talk about heard. the Stanley Cup. Talk about Sidney Crosby. This is because your Red Wings stink. And they're not and in you the want to take it out on a real arc. Get out. And Get that out is why I'm taking Get out. the Pens. Your Do bet. you think they're going to win tonight? Your bet. No. Your bet. Just because the Red Wings, okay, can't make it into the fucking <laughs> dance doesn't mean you need to waltz your ass over to the Pittsburgh Look, Penguins like you did to the Steelers. Put a puck right in his teeth, dude. Oh, well, we led off the Pat Mackey show today by you saying, basically, hockey stinks and no one cares about hockey. Here we go. That's not Penguins. Here we go. That's not the chance. Penguins going to the Stanley Cup. Get out. Here we go. That's not how chant goes, dudes. Let's God go. God damn it. Let's go, Pence. Oh, what the fuck? Oh no, <laughs> we have a casualty, oh no. Man, I'm gonna need you to zoom in on that. I'm gonna need you to lower the camera. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Take your Mickey Mouse, play it, Mickey. Get out. Get rid of, Mick, get rid of the money line. Kindly leave. Now, now scroll down, Other zoom camera. down, Mick. Other camera. I'm so confused. Yes. Other camera. I'm so confused. Uh, Straight camera. to hell that one. Yeah. Why'd you do that? Mitt, with the Nick and Gumpy camera, will you zoom in on the ground, please? What, 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 what happened? <laughs> what, I Thank just you. left. He what happened. happened. Nick spiked that plant. <laughs> I can't have it, Pat. I only care about a few things in this world, oh, you, can you know that, that and bit. hockey is one of them. The Pittsburgh Penguins are right at the top of that goddamn list, and he's pissing all over them right now. I mean, fair. I mean, this is going to take a while to clean up. There's shrouds everywhere. Shrap metal, dude. Yeah. Shrap metal, Hey, dude. thanks, Foxy. I have to pick that up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I'll believe it. What, where was that? What, it was what's Connor's, going on, though? It's Connor's place. It was on his... So listen, Foxy. What? You fuck over his life. Yeah. What you did? He I did. said fuck over Connor's life. This is this is a a trend now. Do we not think that the Pens are gonna win tonight? That's all they gotta do. We do. We did. That's all we gotta do. We gotta get a goalie in that that's not Swiss cheese, and we're all happy at the end of the day. We're happy. Like, what? It's lucky. Is this immediately after I left. Yeah. yeah. Lucky. Yeah. Dude. You're lucky you weren't here, dude. You would have caught one in the neck probably. I I couldn't risk. But who has a cactus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would love to get Connor's thoughts on this plant being fucking broken. 
Luckily, the styrofoam is still good. Just get the succulent out of my sight. <laughs> the death of the succulent is not on me. You're fucking go to hell, dude! Oh, you, you want to go to hell? Oh, you want to go to hell? Oh, you want to go to hell? And I'm taking the bag of the gun! And I'm taking the bag of the gun! You just got the gun! You son of a bitch! You son of a bitch! Good scrap, boys. Good scrap. Fucking stick tap. Can we get a goddamn socially distant contest? What do you guys do? What was this? We lost the thing. Oh no, the Iowa. You fucking cool it down. The Iowa. Fight him. No. The Hawkeye popcorn's on him. Go to hell then. Get the hell out of here. Screw you. Get out. The Hawkeye popcorn's done. Just ready for and I'm war. taking whoever's playing the Penguins because he's destroying the Steelers and the Penguins for you two clowns. What are you still out. doing in here? You made your pick. Get out. Fade Foxy. Are you all right? Good scrap. Hey, good scrap. I'm good. Uh, fucking, I stick tapped you. Yeah, physically fine, mentally destroyed. Had to. Guys ruined everything. Call the money line. One eight three three four two 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 three three. Some people need to learn how to handle. For our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured. I'm sorry about that. That was an error. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show here on Thursday. There it is. Yeah. It's Thursday. Smackdown's yeah. tomorrow. Let's yeah. go. Here we go. Hey, dude. I'm going to be honest. All these days are starting to blend together. Oh, yeah. They are. <laughs> Last week, we were down there from Wednesday to Sunday. Monday came real quick, especially when I didn't sleep the entire night. And now all the days are just kind of... <laughs> You know what I mean? This is wild. Mm-hmm. One. It's yeah. Thursday. Of course it is. Oh, yeah. It's a great Thursday, too. Robert Mathis, the Sandman, was sitting in Gumpy's seat where Gumpy is currently sitting because the Hammer Don boys uh, went, what'd you guys go? 11-1 and one yesterday. Yes, sir. Ooh. Yes, sir. That's unbelievable. Now, the Hammer Don uh, drama has seemed to cease, which is good news, but there was a couple brawls on there, and things can get contentious whenever you're talking about bets and picks and teams mm-hmm. and things like that. I appreciate you two sitting in the pocket taking all the blitz- blitzes and pressures every single day in the gambling world. It's really only one man's fault. Yeah. But we won't get into it. Yeah, his name's right. Evan Fox. Uh, yes. uh-huh. Scumbag. Joining us now, not a man who is not a scumbag. Uh, oh. Just, you know. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> What's that all about? Why'd Connor say that, AJ? I don't know, man. Connor, you, you okay over there? Yeah, Got I'm anything okay. to get off your chest? Yeah, no, I'm okay. I mean, AJ's a dirtbag. <laughs> it's not as if it's the world. AJ, I don't think that's the case. <laughs> I, I want to let you know, we appreciate having you on here. You didn't deserve that. I did hear that you got sent the... Uh, just the short clip of the Gary V thing and not the full clip. So no, I saw the full clip. I saw it all. below it was the full one. And you know what? After I watched the full full clip, I'm on board. Gary V. Yes. I mean, I, I'm, I've always been a Gary V guy, but I understand why he said this. And I think when you shorten it, it does take it out of context and you don't understand. Thank you, AJ. Thank you. You're right. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, Gary. Okay. What? Okay. Yeah. 
All right, we can all clap and be, you know, happy Dory, but okay. Happy Dory. <laughs> yeah, happy Dory. We're all happy Dory. Uh, I, sure. What, what are you? Are you upset at Dory right well, now? I'm not upset at Dory, but I was just thinking about one of my loved ones getting shot in the face. So my perspective right now is oh, a little so off. You're, so you're thankful Dory right I'm now? I'm thankful Dory no, right that, now. That hasn't happened. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, anyway. Connor's, he probably sits there and thinks of Aristotle getting shot in the face. And it's, it's a different thing than Gary B. wants him to do. No, I don't think about Aristotle getting shot in the face. I think about feeding him one of these bows every day. All right. Uh, listen. Just daily elbows. All right. That's a 13-year-old kid. <laughs> yeah. Child. And That's a 13-year-old kid. He's going to catch a brick. All right. Jesus. Gee, you're a terrible guy. I, I, I honestly, in that particular world, just little humans, how you're supposed to interact, parenting world, adult world, I'm not 100% sure if what you just said is even allowed. Yeah. I, 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 no it's not. This is something that I have no knowledge of. I'm not sure if you're... You are an adult. Huh? Okay. Well, yeah. You're an adult. Yeah. You well, are well. an adult. Saying that a 13 year old kid is going to catch a brick. That I don't know if that is. I don't think that's supposed to society happen. Well, Bill Burr, you know, he said it. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you know. Exactly. <laughs> Yo, was, all right. Listen, let's not make a habit of quoting uh, people that you definitely aren't. You know, be who you can afford to be. Do not do. Let's not start doing that. No, I don't no. think that's good. Business, well, I just but. won't. I just won't see it. And if I do see it, I'll just mute it. And oh, then yeah. I never saw it. Oh, that's what you're talking about with Bill Burr, where yeah. people say that he's canceled. By who? Yeah. <laughs> he said he doesn't go online, he doesn't see it. What are we doing? Let's move on. What a legend. Uh, but listen, let's not make a habit out of that. No, no, no. Me, and, me and Aristotle will put our qualms aside next time I see him. I mean, for five years. Don't Whoa. see him. That's what I'm talking about. I don't think you're supposed to be around him either. Well, I don't know. You might just How do you make it even street? worse? No, you, you, if you this see him, guy. you go, Mr. Stottle. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Stoddard. Yeah, I'm going to call him Mr. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. In what world? Well, this kid's a 13 year old dunking on your ass. You should have a little he, bit of respect he for the your future. Father. He is your father. You should say I'm going to sit right underneath the rim and I'm going to try and stuff him again. All right. Yes. Hey, I'm sure you yeah, is. There's a restraining order already out on you, Conrad. All right. I hope so. Let's move on. It, I, I honestly have no idea. This is one of the things where. I don't know anything about it. I don't know if what you're doing is normal or not. Nobody I know is around kids enough to potentially talk to them the way you speak to them. Yeah. But it's just one, because I thought you were supposed to hype these kids up. No. All right. He said he was a Yankees fan, and, and he was like, oh, even though we're not good, and me and Ty immediately go, and Ty, think of Ty. Mm. Me and Ty immediately go, hey, don't, hey. So don't say that. Hey, they're going to win it all this year. Like, don't you know, say trying that. to restore a little bit of, like, hey, you're 13. Like, you can't be a come pessimistic on. asshole. Yeah, like, come on, get it up. And uh, he, he starts celebrating. And then the burial of you. Yeah. So I just, you know, I just think, you know, the, he's the future. That's right. We are, we are. You the the nation. nation. We are, we are. That's what Aristotle's doing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. left after dunking on you. He went to one of those. They're the future. He didn't go to one of those. Right. I mean, I can't, I, I can't speak on it anymore, but he might have been going down to the old corner store and smoking butts outside the gas station. <laughs> we don't know. He was not. Aristotle we don't know. He's 13. Jeez. Listen, this is your problem. He's 13. cheeseburger. 13's not young enough to be smoking butts. <laughs> exactly. But he's probably doing it. No, he's not. No, right, see, these kids no. are ripping their jewels. Right, listen, no. Hey, you should not, if, you, you, if you're a 13-year-old listening to this, okay, don't. Don't be doing it. Don't be doing it. it. It might feel like it's a good move. You might feel cool for no. a moment. Okay, long term, just a few years, you're going to be like, why the hell did I get into it? I, I have never met a person who at some point in their life didn't regret starting that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Now, you will potentially go through phases where you will want back into this thing. And by the way, that's what you're doing for the rest of your life if you choose to do that. Mm -hmm. With that being said, Connor, stop saying what you're fucking saying about Mr. Stone. Okay, that's just the reality of it. I'm trying to enlighten this younger generation on how it's supposed to be. Okay, AJ, the PGA Championship has started today at Kiowa Island in South Kakalaka. Uh, John Daly had the lead early. There has been some people who have beat him thus far. Bill Salat Taurus just teed off. He had a slice two fairways over. He will battle. It gets windy there as well, so if you don't get it clean, that ball is going to go in the wrong direction, a far way. I think this is supposed to be a tough one. Diggs, any thoughts on who's who we should be betting Where's on? Where's the leaderboard right now? Uh, Do you have okay. a leaderboard? Zito's going to pull that up right now. Uh, go ahead, Diggs. Uh, the course has potential to be the longest course in PGA Championship history, and they will do that at some point this week. With the wind, it's going to be it's going to be hard. Uh, the leaderboard, Vic Hovland, Keegan Bradley, Brooks Kepka, and Colin Morikawa all tied at minus three at the top. Let's go, Morikawa! Let's go! It's our guy, AJ. Remember, you fell asleep 
talking to uh, Dan Wetzel, same day we talked to Morikawa down there. Yeah, I remember. You snooze right on Wetzel the pretzel's face. Bullshit. No, I did not snooze. I was sitting in a sauna outside of uh, a house in Orlando. And you fell asleep. Absolute, lost 22 pounds, I think, that day. Yep, I did. <laughs> I did. I got sunglasses on. No, I put shades on the next day, so in case it happened again. You literally, <laughs> yes, again. <laughs> So we cut the Wetzel, the pretzel talking, and Dan Wetzel does not deserve this. He gave us a great interview that day. He was good. It had nothing to do with him. Well, I mean, for, we can say that you cannot because you did not hear it. He, this guy started talking. AJ's sitting right next to me, and while people are talking and it goes to the full screen, I'm listening, but I also look around to see if anybody like has any questions or anything. And I, he goes full screen. I look over. AJ. Literally, I haven't seen this in so long because I haven't been in situations where this happened. High school, it happens, you know, in mm -hmm. class. Meetings, this happens, I assume, all over the place. College, it happens. He, he has literally had, like, the full, like, eyes fighting, head falling, like, this whole thing. And I just stared at him while Wetzel did continue. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Wetzel did mm -hmm. continue to go. And as soon as he opened his eyes, he, he, he looked for the microphone, and then he looked around, and he just made eye contact. <laughs> Exactly with me, and I was like, oh, 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 this is gonna be something. And you're like, what? You're like, no, I didn't. It's just you dunked on him that day, like Aristotle did Connor. But that day, we also got to talk to Morikawa, I think, for the first time. And he was cool, man. He was a good guy, and he's good with his irons. Is that mm, why yeah. this is such a big deal for Colin Morikawa, Dicks? Yeah, big iron play. And then actually, things are going well. We had a golf guy on yesterday, cut maker Jeff. Shout out, he uh picked Morikawa, he had Keegan Bradley's first round leader who is tied and then Brooks Kepka was 50 to 1 to win the PGA championship and it's because he's been he's been his knee and he missed a cut last week but Brooks in a, in a championship at 50 to 1 said you had to take it so we I think we did I do remember him saying we did by the way because I heard you guys say that we did take what was it. the who had the best odds to win this thing uh Rory Rory Rory, Rory comes in hot but also um you know you never know with he Rory. is one of yeah. major you never know with Rory, though. He's won a major. No, I'm saying he hasn't won a Recent. major since, like, it's been oh, yeah. a long, It's been a while. Time. But so he maybe. did win a couple weeks ago, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's playing his best, and everybody thinks he's back, so maybe he'll get it. Hey, and this is one of those weekends where I'm going to be at Mika Motto Auctions on Saturday. Oh, nice. Came down here in Indianapolis, so. so I see, yeah, I'm Big bop. time. Big timer, huh? Uh, you know, I, listen, I had to pay for a table in there. Pretty expensive. I did not know. <laughs> As what are some, you going to buy? I don't know. I have no idea. They, they've been in Indy the last four days, yeah. and we have it on a TV out here. So I've seen a lot of cars go through. I don't know what's going to be left on Saturday. They sent me an email of all the cars that are potentially going on Saturday. That thing was 40 scrolls deep. I'm like, <laughs> I ain't fucking looking at this. So I guess I'm just going to go. We'll see what I see. See what Sam wants, too. She'll be oh, there. This is awesome. This is so dangerous for you to go and, and be around all those cars, and all you got to do is hold your little paddle up. Yeah, and I don't know how, like, am I taking a credit card, a checkbook? You got to get, you got to get, like, very, like, they have to, before you get there, I'm sure you have to, they work Pretty with your bank to give you, you have a certain amount that you can spend. Checkbook feels like the move. I'm just taking my checkbook then. That's yeah. You got to be, like, pre-approved, though. You can't just be some slappy and all of a sudden you put your paddle. I know, yeah, I got it. Bought a table. Go so we bought a table. Oh, we bought a, a table that is actually, we got how two. How much is the table? Uh, it was a few thousand to get like Jeez. where we were going. Just to get the table to be in there? Yeah, but I think it's it comes with a, or maybe it was. Comes with a bottle of Belvedere. You got bottle service. I think Hopefully. it was 15 or 800 or 50. I think I got two. So I think Ooh. it was 800 maybe. Is I don't okay. know. We got two of them. Sam set this up though because we're such big fans of the show. Like literally watch the show so much. They're coming. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. We're going. We have to go. Love cars. Like I, I couldn't tell you a lot about most cars, but I love cars. It was one thing that when I got uh, money for the first time in my life, I've bought cars. I've kept cars. I've not sold a single car that I have. To the detriment of the cars. You know? <laughs> I mean, they're in, they're in tip-top shape. That's why. Like, you don't want to get rid of them. Right? Well, you know, they did say that black mold in my first Escalade is not fixable. <laughs> and that's a shame. I did not know it had a leak for four or five years. And it did. <laughs> and it was just parked out there by the barn. I actually wanted to bring that thing back. I wanted to make it a monster truck for the winter. I was like, yo, can I get this thing jacked up and get some uh, a new engine in it? They're like, yeah, let's take a look at it. Uh, these people uh, look at it. They're like, there's black mold on the inside of this thing. I was like, well, take it out. Like, you can't. Like, this is a piece of scrap metal now. I'm like, I mean, you could have delivered that to me a little nicer. <laughs> Come on. This is my first ever car that I bought with my, you know what I mean? Like, let's have a little bit of respect at least. But I love cars. I'm going there on Saturday. But PGA Championship Sunday, that's a good watch. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That's a good watch. Why I love you, golf. I'll probably be on Meekum Saturday, huh? 
Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'll probably be on. Right? Be it's gonna, it's, it's gonna be televised for sure. Yeah, yeah I always. think so. Always. NBC Sports Network. I don't right? know if it'll be live. It'll probably be at night. And, and imagine if I send you guys a text like, hey, watch tonight. I got into one. <laughs> <laughs> I got into one. Because those things can go. Was, there's people on the phone. There's people in the building. There's people else. Play. Like, I, how, much you, how much are you willing to spend on one car? I don't know. It depends on what it is, you know? You got to have some kind of range, though, of what you're, you think you're going to spend, right? Yeah, I know what I'm going to go in there in my head. You know, it's kind of okay. like this is like Vegas. It's kind of like a trip to Vegas. It's like, all right. They don't uh, all go for crazy amounts, right? Like, there's, no, there's cars no, going for. There's some good deals. There was like, a Shelby for 18000 or 19000 earlier, and it's like, I can't believe that. A lot of reserves, though. You know, there's a lot of reserves that are set on at most auctions, you know, eBay, everything. There's a reserve where at least the owner who's putting it up has a little bit of insurance that they'll get at least this. The ones with no reserve, though, I mean, those people are living dangerously. I've seen some very nice cars that just so happen to go in front of an audience there that maybe didn't love it. And all of a sudden it's gone because there's they, they've been in Phoenix. This make them auto auctions. It's it's. For me, I love watching it. I, I, I watch a lot of it and I like cars and all that shit. But they'll go places and in some cities it's like, hey, this is a big like uh, muscle car city. So like the muscle cars coming out are going for, like, I'm not saying Phoenix is like that, but they travel around where you see like the audience likes different things. This That Shelby going for 19,000 earlier was very surprising because I felt like Indiana is a big like, hey, I'm getting that Shelby Ford. Okay, I'm getting that Mustang with 500, Mustang. 600 yeah. ponies. Like, I thought that was the thing. And it, there's a couple that have slipped by here today. Yeah, I assume cities like Phoenix, Miami, if they were to go around there, there's a lot more sports cars type Imports, cars down yeah, there. Yeah, a lot of Up here, you, you can't drive those. Or they'll, they'll die. They will die. By the way, they're fixing the entire uh, highway, you know? Oh, yeah. For the next 18 months, you know? <laughs> yeah. The world will shut down for 14 months, but as soon as it opens back up, let's shut this. Shut the fucking highway down. Let's shut the most important. <laughs> thing down for 18 months or whatever uh but out here it looks like the moon there's craters out here in front yeah. of our thing i mean I, this it's all going to hell dude it's all going to hell <laughs> anyway sunday though i'll watch the shit out of that golf i love i, I very much enjoy that I, i'm kind of bummed on saturday i'm going to the auction i'm like excited but i like when there's just golf on that matters all day it's a, it's a nice background music for sure yeah what network will it be on do you see, know see this is the every fucking weekend problem you go to the yeah. golf channel, you think it's on. Nope, it's not. It's uh -huh. a previous one. Oh, fuck. I thought I was all right. And then you go to. It doesn't to, start till late either on the other yeah, channels. There's it's one started jumping one all over today. the place. Well, and you go to the app, you go to the app, and it, it only has a certain amount of holes. There's only two holes or certain. It's like the golf makes it very difficult to be watched. But whenever they get on, I feel like most people enjoy it. This is just like hockey. The NHL playoffs right now. Ooh. Hey, more overtime. Yeah, Every single right. night there's an overtime. Yeah. It is. They, the NHL is crushing right Right now, now, granted, LeBron hits a game winner, you know, <laughs> with three rims in front of him. Hey, he, he got poked in the eye by Draymond. Michigan State move. By the yeah. way, whoa, whoa, stabbing whoa. him right now. I couldn't see anything. He gets the ball. Shot clock down. LeBron step back from the four-point shot distance in the big three. Yep. Splash with one fucking eye. He's watching in stereo. Have you ever had a patch on? Did you ever dress up like a pirate for fun? That depth perception is impossible. He said he's seen three rims. He shot for the middle one. Splash. Now he's only four. Fourth quarter, end of game, game time, game winning makes away from Kobe Bryant as the all-time leader. Just another big time night for LeBron James and the Lakers. And we get to see Steph Curry again on Friday. I'm really happy LeBron's not on at the same time as Friday night SmackDown. Steph Curry, also not great, obviously, <laughs> but what a night for sports last night uh, with Bruins caps and yes. goalie going fucking up in overtime and the other game that was on Carolina and whatever. And then <laughs> LeBron at mid Midnight and that game starts and ends at like 4 a.m. Yeah, he hit. I mean, it was a great like seven hour stretch last night of sports. AJ, aren't you glad that he he was seeing three rims and not four? It's, it's a lot of you can you have that that middle rim to shoot for if you see three. If you see four, it's a lot tougher to figure out that middle spot. I think Pac Man is FaceTiming me right now. <clears throat> oh, what's up? <sighs> Mute this for a second. Probably mute them all. <laughs> Just for the, he's gonna. Uh, it looks like he answered. Oh, you muted all of them, huh? Oh yeah. Oh, looks good. 
What, Pat's talking to him. Something's going on. You guys can hear him a little bit. Zeke, can you hear him at all? I can hear him a little bit. Oh. Looks like he's coming on. Yeah. Yep, he's going to say it into the mic, it looks like. Okay, are we live? Uh, just got FaceTime. He's with Vaughn Rivers, Pittsburgh legend, West Virginia legend. Love that guy, actually. Uh, great to see you, Vaughn. I'm live right now. We got to catch up at some point. Pac-Man, what did you want to say? You just said something very loud in there. I seen Bobby Lang at 170 pounds, right? That's the champ at Barstool. Yeah. All right. Tell him I'm looking for him. I'm going to kick his ass. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. You got it. I'm waiting on you, Bobby. <laughs> See you soon, buddy. Hey, Pac, qu quick question for you, Pac. Uh, I heard you and Ocho were going to fight. Is that real? Was that ever going to happen? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Ocho backed out on that fight. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I think after... You know, these celebrity boxing things started happening. We asked you, and you said, hey, I'll fight anybody. Anybody wants to fight, I'll fight. Have you been training at all, boxing at all, or are you just natural in there? Uh, no, Pat. You know, if I'm talking to talk, I must be walking the walk. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Pac, I appreciate you. Love you, buddy. Hey, you too. See you. See you, Vaughn. Cheers, man. Yeah, me, Bobby. Okay, 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 okay. I assume that would happen. <laughs> so who's Bobby Lane? Bobby Lane, I'll Barstow, right he's a champ. Pax says, I want him. He's a fighter? At 170, is this guy, rough and round? Is he the guy who beat Conseco? No. No, no that's no, um, Billy Football. Uh, that's Billy Football. By the way, what a fucking legendary night for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? There's a couple photos there where it looks like Jose Canseco is scared to death of him. Uh -huh. Oh, what a moment, dude. That's a rough and rowdy. I'd assume that is a champion yeah. or something. I don't know. I can't find Bobby Lane anywhere. Pac, by the way, I think he is about that business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he... Um, Pac-Man also potentially still thinks that I work at Barstool. So he thinks that I have any say in that. Oh, <laughs> I'd like to let him know right. that, that I do not. Is that why... Did he call you to tell you he wanted to fight the guy? Yeah, yeah, that's it. He <laughs> oh, yeah. As he, he answered, he said, hey, I want fucking Bobby Lang. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, all right, Pat. Oh, where is Bobby Lang. Lang? Bobby Lang? r, &R heavyweight champ Bobby Lang threw out a gauntlet. This is from Robbie, heavyweight. Robbie Fox. Out the gauntlet a few weeks back, and nobody accepted for what it's worth. Oh, this is Robbie Fox quote tweeted Baron Corbin last week or, or last week saying, hey, I'll knock out both Paul brothers at the same time. Robbie Fox quote tweets this and say, hey, hey, heavyweight champ Bobby Lang threw out the gauntlet a few weeks back. I assume Pac-Man was sent this. Ah. Pac said 170, though. How, how much does that dude weigh? Uh, He's got good traps. Heavy. I don't know how much he was. I'm not she, sure. Corbin, she's heavyweight. I would imagine it's over 200. I don't know, but I, I will say, um, if Bobby Lang gets down to 170, I'll be excited to see uh, Pac-Man Jones' boxing debut. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my put, God. Put Pac on that undercard in Miami. Isn't that in June? Hey, don't put him. Have that in Morgantown. Oh, you're right. You know what I mean? They, they've yeah. had, you put Pac-Man and Morgan, I mean Miami too. Like listen, that's, uh, by the way, that would be different, rough and rowdy, that it would be uh, Showtime, I think, is yeah. the one in June, mm -hmm. right? Which, by the way, Jake Paul just signed with, so I'll be excited to see what happens with Triller. Whoa. Yeah. I'll be excited to see what happens with Triller in, in this whole thing, because Jake Paul just signed with Showtime uh, Boxing, who are Showtime Sports, which, by the way, is Floyd Mayweather's uh, promotional uh, relationship, I believe, for uh, money, Productions? Ah, I forget his production. Whatever. Mayweather Productions? Mayweather Productions. He's made hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars through his own promotions. Showtime is his partner in this entire thing. Showtime approaching Jake Paul, and I'd assume Logan Paul's next fight will be there as well, is good business for Showtime. Good business for Jake, I assume. Congrats to him, man. Yeah, yeah. This is unbelievable. Uh, but once again, boxing is where a lot of money is at. And if you can get that thing to be a spectacle, you can earn quite a living. But in saying that, you can also get knocked the fuck out out there yeah. and become a meme for the rest of your life, AJ. Well, yeah, that's the, okay. So yes, the whole thing is a spectacle. I, I loved, I, I was just, it was bizarre. It, it was it was fun to watch. And it was fun to think about how angry certain people were watching the whole thriller situation play out. Oh yeah. But you you have to be able to fight a little bit. And Jake Paul can, Logan Paul can't. Like, if they're in there and they, they look like the, old school tough man contest where they get tired after 30 seconds and they can't throw a proper punch it's not going to work but i feel like because these dudes actually do train and look pretty good they have a chance i think so too and boxing not against, i don't know about getting floyd mayweather but i'm saying they have a chance to continue and have some consistent success i, I will say that a lot of people um in the boxing world hate them and say they're terrible at boxing 
And then I heard um, Fighter and the Kid, Fighter and the Kid, Fighter Brennan and the Kid. Brennan Schaub. Brennan Schaub. Uh, he came out and said, like, Everybody's judging these guys like first three boxing matches. Like, like let's go back and look at Floyd Mayweather's first three boxing matches. Like, what Conor McGregor did in his first boxing match, unbelievable. Like, these guys, are they world champions is basically what Shab was saying. No, but let's look at the world champions' first three matches. I would assume these guys are better than that, and they're much better than they should be or whatever. I think that was his entire take. But that boxing community is very similar to a lot of those other communities. It's like, don't disrespect our sport with what you're doing. And everybody else from outside the boxing community is like, hey, we're actually showing it more respect than you've ever shown it. We're putting it up on a goddamn spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're dedicating time. Jake Paul and Logan Paul can make money doing whatever they wanted, by the way. Just just a heads up to everybody that doesn't know this. Logan Paul, Jake Paul could make money doing whatever the fuck they wanted. There's only a couple people on the internet that can do that. Uh, Paul Brothers, Portnoy, um, he can... Pardon my take, they're, they're a group that no matter what they get involved with, they'll be able to make money, but they're under that Barstool umbrella, so we'll just put that whole thing there. Uh, Rogan, right, he can do yeah. whatever and, and make money off it. The Pauls, what they have built, they can make money doing whatever. They are committing so much time to a sport, to, a, I don't wanna say a, a dying sport, because it's not a dying sport, but I believe the luster of it has potentially fallen mightily since the past. They're putting all their time into this. I feel like the boxing community should be happy about this. This is just like the baseball folks who, uh, you know, immediately want to say, this guy isn't the greatest player. This guy, let's slow it down, okay? It's like, well, first of all, there's something exciting in baseball for the first time in maybe what, ever? Ever. Since Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa were doing their whole yes. thing for people outside of baseball. Mm -hmm. This is not inside baseball, but outside of baseball. This guy, this guy stinks. That's what, like, basically, that's what the baseball purists are telling me on Twitter. And it's like, I understand, okay, okay, okay. I say he's the greatest of all time. I say he's the next Babe Ruth because, you know, that's really the only comp. Probably. And I don't really like a month in this whole thing, you know, it's the only comp. But for me, like, hey, I ain't seen anybody else do this goddamn shit. I, I have, right now, I have not, we haven't seen this in a long time. Let's just say the guy, most talented player of all time. And then they get mad about that because then I'm disrespecting all players. But once again, like Otani, the Pauls, they put a massive spotlight on something. I think that's good for the sport. Unlike people in baseball who think 48 mile an hour pitches on 3-0 counts should be automatic strikes. I feel like that's disrespecting the sport as well, I think, you know? So it's like all in the angle and how you view the respect and who's disrespecting who, I think, in a lot of situations. Well, to your point about baseball, like Otani was pitching last night. I mean, like, I am sure the ratings of those games when the Angels are playing and they stink, you know, are, are higher than whatever the typical like how many strikeouts he get last night uh, i think you only had like four or five god we had we boosted the over on his strikeouts didn't promote it because i had no idea how he pitched I, <laughs> I have never seen the guy pitch i've only seen highlights of him throwing the absolute mud mm -hmm. out there but we boosted that just to see uh I, he did not hit it apparently That's no right. he didn't but i did see he bunted against a shift oh yeah oh genius hey, he's good go, he's, he's smart, smart baseball player smart. AJ. Wow. smart baseball he didn't look player. too happy when he got yanked He'd only thrown 72 pitches. And he thought he was good to go, but this goes to the baseball thing. It's like, hey, this guy's never going to make it. We're probably going to have to pull him. Will we ever get a chance to see if this guy could have been Randy Johnson and Barry Bonds? Mm. You know, that's 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 a little bit of what I'm worried about, AJ, is because they're going to want to pull him back. No, why, why would they, they're going to pull him back from pitching too much because they think he's going to be too tired to hit? I think they're just injury. worried about his arm. Like just his he only, yeah. he only, only threw arm. 72 pitches last night, but his velocity was the lowest it's ever been in a start. But I think he was just trying some new stuff rather than just trying to throw as hard as he could. Yeah, I mean, this guy doesn't have a chance to bounce around the minors and try out new pitches, okay? Because he's, he's got a big league bat, mm -hmm. all right? That's what he's got. Too so damn good. He's kind of got to, you know, he's got to test some things out in real life pitches. But guess what? That's what Otani does. Yep. That's right. He does. Your games are his practices, pal. Yeah. Your gas is BP, pal. Uh huh. Go ahead and send that. We are having a time with it. Ain't that right, AJ Hawk? Hey, how old is he? I have no idea, dude. Young. I know nothing about this guy. He's like 24, 25. I know yeah. he's got Tommy on already, though, so that thing's good, fake good for at least another 10 years. Mm -hmm. 26. 26. 26. Hey, were, you, were any of the oh, baseball shit. boys in the studio surprised that Pujols was signed uh, by the Dodgers? No, because no. he didn't have to move. Yeah, in and, LA. But no, I saw. I think I saw team. Samson say when he was let go, like, all right, what, kudos to a great career. He said no one will pick him up, and then he oh. got picked up right away. No, you always need a bat like that to pinch hit or something, AJ. 
Samson Dunn. How about Tiny LaRusso? They're, they're calling for him to get the fuck out get of out, there. Get out, dude. Mm-hmm. After what he said the other day about old buddy, you know, spitting in the face of baseball legacy. Uh, Disrespecting the game. Old booze bag. How, 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 just like I just said, perspective, by the way, for everything that somebody says is disrespectful to something, like, not granted, there are disrespectful acts, okay? I'm not, like, yeah, yeah. legitimate ones. But is a pitcher throwing under 50 miles an hour in a fucking MLB game, is that not disrespectful to the goddamn league? I yeah, can go out and say yeah, so. If, I can if, go out and throw If you want to put a position player to pitch, deal with the fucking consequences. Yeah, well, it, it's just the three... And don't expect the hitters to not swing exactly. at the pitch. Exactly. Like, but it's all... Player. LaRusse is a buffoon. He said... His own, his own pitcher, he goes, that's why he's got a locker and I got an office. Like, the guy oh. pitches for your fucking team, you buffoon. Yeah, and I think it was CC Sabathia came yeah. out and said, yeah. get him the hell out of there, basically. Yeah. He's like, get, yeah. you get this guy. He, if he's not going to get his own guy, what's the purpose of having a manager if he doesn't have his guys back? And the White Sox are one of the best young teams in baseball. Really yeah, amazing. You know, imagine, the Russa, though. imagine how tough it is for LaRusso probably to – because baseball has definitely changed over time. Like, yeah. I, I've talked to guys that are probably – 50 some years old now and they say how they they pitched for a long time there's one guy i know and he was saying just how different the clubhouse was from yeah when he got into the league until the end and listen tony you're a great coach okay you'll just always be remembered as one who can't adapt and evolve yeah. with his players you know who could do it bill belichick you know who could yeah. do it andy reed you know who could nick do saban. it pete carroll you know who could do it nick saban now he couldn't do it in the nfl but he was able to do it in college over the locker room has changed i've mentioned this numerous times it was very different in there towards the end but somehow these great coaches and i assume in baseball these great managers adjust to who they're coaching adjust to who they're playing trying to get the most out of them maybe he thinks the best way to do it is by burying his players maybe that's his move maybe we don't maybe we don't understand what he's doing but also i think we're at a time where i understand it worked that was cool this is how you it's just not the reality of the world nope. and we can yell at a wall and want to change or we can just you know face that this is what this is and if you don't like it like cool hey you you're you're right to your decision in your opinion but like that's not going to change it yep <laughs> like hey hate to break it to you that ain't going to change it you know there might be a couple guys that get in there that are old school and you everything like that but guess what there's going to be a couple guys that get in there too that were like hey you know what it's okay if we evolve this game a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, I see I see all my friends my age, professional and other sports, they're doing a lot of things. Our game seems to not do that. Our game seems to have ratings down. Our game seems to lack relevancy. I'd like to change it a little bit. Can we not throw our bat after hitting the ball 450 feet? Can I not do that? No, you can't do that because it's disrespectful to the pitcher. Well, I just hit a ball 450 feet. Is that fucking disrespectful to it? I think I took his best stuff gone. Is that not disrespectful? And what about when he strikes out? What is he supposed to do? He's supposed to just walk off and not step on the paint either while he's getting back in there. It's like, why can't he just go like, hey, Fuck you. Like, why Why can't he do that? And it's like, well, disrespect for the game. It's like, as somebody outside of baseball who once played professionally, man, that would be awesome if that was happening. Makes the game better. That would be awesome if it was like real competition, you know, like real competitive people allowing themselves to be themselves. That's awesome. That's why hockey, they need to let those mic'd ups out a lot. Oh, yes. They need to let those, th- those guys are willing to die out there yeah. for their team. And they are okay saying it to the other person as well. I love it. Yeah, well, the one guy who was it that died on the ice and tried to when they when they revived him, he tried to go back in the game. I don't know, but like that, five years ago, I assume incredible. he was a penguin. I assume yeah. that guy was a Pittsburgh <laughs> penguin. And there's a new one, Tanev in town. This guy's got long flowing hair. He's Ooh. our fastest player, but it kind of scares me watching everybody else's speed. I've not seen all the other playoff teams play this year, you know, because it's hard to see Penguins games in Indianapolis because there's not a hockey team here, so it's a little difficult. Seems like a lot of the teams in the playoffs are very fast. Oh, These are flying. No. Oh, we got to get to a break. Ian Rappaport. It was Rich Peverly. Is he a penguin? No, he's, he was a star. Oh, okay. Well, happy, happy he came back. Yeah. My baby Rich. Good job, Congrats, dude. Rich. Let's get to a break. We got Ian Rappaport on the other side. Rap Sheet will join us. He has some things to talk about, I'm assuming. This is the Pat McAfee Show, Thursday, May 20th. We are 10 minutes late on Rap Sheet. <laughs> Yikes. For no reason, by the way. There was nothing good we talked <laughs> about. Baseball. Again. Nah, there was nothing. We'll see Rap Sheet on the other side. <laughs> okay, so I was uh, elected captain a week. We played the Lions up in Detroit, and Vandenbosch was one of the captains for them. 
and he had red contacts. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had red contacts in, and we walked up to each other, right? And I think I'm with like Mathis and some other people. I don't know. I, I should not have been there. I was just far left or whatever. You know, I'm just on the far left side of it. And I walk in, and we all dap each other up, and then he's there. And I go straight his hands. I look him in the eyes, and I didn't say anything. I just looked him right in the eyes, and he like dapped me up or whatever, gave a fist bump. And I just stared at him for the entire coin toss. Like the ref was talking to whoever was going to talk for us. And I was just looking this guy right in the eyes the whole time. And then as soon as we go to leave, I go, that's wild, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just jog off to my side. Like, in those captain's meetings, I've had some incredible electric moments. We played against the Minnesota Vikings. And Adrian Peterson uh, was the captain of Vikings. I was captain of the Colts. There was like three other people. We walk out there for this. And the only thing I've heard about Adrian Peterson is how firm. Well, I've heard a lot of things about Adrian Peterson. Those aside. <laughs> but I've heard that Adrian Peterson's handshake is a firm one. Like Adrian Peterson has a firm handshake. It's like this legendary story. So we go out for the coin toss and I see him and I'm like, here mm-hmm. we go. And as soon as we go for the handshake, I get in early. I get in very because the key to breaking a very stern handshake is you get in early because you got to beat the grip you got to beat the grip so he's like kind of casually shaking everybody else's hands i'm like dapping everybody up like slowly slowly (laughs) and i'm like watching him the entire time and he brings his hand out and i race in to get the netting and your thumb on the thumb and then i squeeze first right so i get like that's like in uh arm wrestling when you get the angle on Mm -hmm. so he squeezes back and I give him like a ha-ha. Like, right? <laughs> so while the coin toss is happening, Adrian Peterson looks at me while he's standing on the other side. Neither of us were speaking captains. And he goes, after the coin toss, we're doing another one. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. He goes back. He, as soon as the coin toss is over, there's another dap up before we run back. And we did this handshake. He got me around too. I'm my, and that was my drop hand too. That's like my punt drop hand. I thought, my, I, thought I was going to be broke. <laughs> but I was like, those coin toss things, I don't know how you don't shake hands because it's just an awkward situation where you're forced to shake hands almost a couple people one college kid took a shot at my swag oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we know oh, we know we don't I like don't that think, kid. I don't think a lot of understand what swag is you know some of the younger generation thinks you know swag is just like you know, the clothes i wear or whatever no 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 a swag is a mentality yeah. swag yeah. is a mindset I tried to tell this to some of the guys in the locker room this week. I said, swagger, which is what swag comes from. Swagger is a mindset. Swagger isn't that you have a supreme backpack on. <laughs> or that you have your shoes, you know, unlaced walking around with, you know, the, the you know, you got your new uh, Louis uh, fanny pack that you, you make sure it's not worn at your waist. It's worn over your shoulder. That's not swag. That's not swagger. That's fashion choices. True swag is owning your inner essence. Mm. It's a mindset. Mm -hmm. And my essence on the field is that I feel like I'm a throwback player. Mm -hmm. And I'm a tough guy. What I've played through, how I wear my stuff, you know, I'm kind of a no-nonsense straightforward. To me, that's what swag is all about you're damn all right this, like, yeah. fake swag out there i got my special towel i got this or i got that i got this riding out there a lot of you guys are just posing <laughs> <laughs> all right all right all right welcome back from your <clears throat> bathroom this break is this is the, the show path. Welcome back. Oh, yeah. Welcome back. Um, this is Pat McAfee Show, Thursday, May 20th, 2021. Um, we have a guest joining us right now. It's supposed to be on 13 minutes ago. That's 100% my fault. Alongside AJ Hawk, the boys and I will be, ladies and gentlemen, insider from the NFL Network and NFL.com, Ian and host of the best show that is currently sitting in hiatus, mm-hmm. Rap Sheet and Friends, ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Hey! What's going on, dude? You look cool. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask. I was going to ask beforehand, but I figured I might as well ask on there. Is it okay that, especially in the summer when I may or may not have played golf this morning, that I dress down and wear a hat? Is that okay? Hey, were you on that golf course with John Elway and Aaron Rodgers? Or where <laughs> uh, where were you golfing at, Ian? You look good, dude. You can come on in a polo whenever you want, pal. You're good with us. I, I loved that story. Um, it's one of my 
it's not my favorite offseason rumor. Obviously, the obviously the Stafford McVay Cabo rumor would would be, of course, number one. But this is, I think, number two for me. Well, I sort. I don't know if you heard me say this earlier, and I assume you did, and you probably have a similar source in this situation that reached out to you. I was told from somebody that would know. Okay, uh, this is not. Aaron or Elway, by the no, way. No. Somebody from potentially from the course was like, hey, same course, different groups, though. That's basically what I was told. Yeah. 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 yeah I would say my source would confirm your source. Uh, not that I would need to confirm you. I think everyone knew that you were on it. Um, I was told they uh, both played golf that day, but did not play together. Um, so, you know, I guess crisis averted, but, you know, it, the the tampering rules are kind of not weird, but I would say even if they had played golf, you know, there's possibility that they sort of know each other Friends. Uh, anyway. So, like, let's say they run into each other and at some point have, like, a, some sort of coffee or soda. Is that tampering? I mean, Packers aren't going to trade him anyway, I don't think. So, I don't know. I mean, okay. much to do about not a lot, but still a fun story. Okay, AJ has a question for you, but let's get right to it right now. The okay. um, the Aaron Rodgers thing, this morning, Falcoholic, I believe, mm -hmm. yep. reported about Julio Jones saying there's potentially a trade, and then uh, somebody's reporting, and Albert Breer, I think, was saying, well, there's been no movement right now, so we'll get to that. But the Aaron Rodgers thing, I think uh, Maziano on ESPN this morning said they are in conversations for a, a long-term contract. The last time you were on, you can Confirmed that there was potentially some contract conversations that had happened. Yeah. Have you heard any updates on this? It's been eerily quiet from the Aaron Rodgers Packers situation since the accumulation drop that came out of nowhere, I think, for right. all parties. Yeah, I mean, I think the point has been made. You know, he's he's obviously unhappy, wants a new contract, wants commitment, wants security, wants contractually based on guaranteed money to be the unquestioned starting quarterback of the Packers as he has earned the right to be. He is a quite a good quarterback. Um, and you know, some might say one of the best in the game. Uh, so I think there's, you know, no question he's earned it. That's what he wants. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that he needs to say anything right now. I think all of that has been said. And I think the Packers have said it, too. Like, even in Matt LaFleur's last press conference, he was kind of like, we, we said what we said and we still mean it. And it's really now like, what happens next? Do they end up getting a deal? And my kind of weird thing about this is like, I don't know when the deadline is. Like these deals happen when they have to happen. That's the only time anyone bends basically in life. So like is the start of OTAs, which he's not going to go to, the thing that makes the deal come together? Like I'm not really sure. So to me, maybe before mini camp, we would see if something happens or even before training camp. Like I don't, I don't get the sense that anything is coming to a head anytime soon. You said you don't think that they will trade him. Is that just from hearing like Lafleur? Are you hearing anything from from back channels like that? Hey, they they have, they're putting their foot down. Like, no, you're playing for us or nobody. I I just from what I understand, they haven't answered anything. They haven't engaged. They haven't answered. They haven't. You know, there. I know there's been trade calls, but I don't believe there's been any trade talk. Oh. And I think AJ, the problem is, so like, let's. This is not the case, but let's say the Packers were into trading Aaron Rodgers. Let's say they wanted to get a fair deal. How in the world do you even get a fair deal without knowing that you're going to have someone as good as Aaron Rodgers to replace him? Like how many draft picks are you insure? Do you know that you're getting Aaron Rodgers? Like that's why to me, so few of these deals actually happen because the team giving up the franchise quarterback can never say, you know, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm all right doing this because I'm definitely getting this guy back. I mean, that's, that's the problem, and that's why for the Packers, I just don't know that it makes sense unless they literally have to. Yeah, there, there's you're not just gonna the grass is gonna be probably dead on the other side of it for at least a while. Now, granted, there's been the Brett to Aaron and Peyton to Andrew. There's been those moves that have happened in the past, but finding a good finding a guy is not. I mean, it's tough to do. It's uh, you yeah. never want to get rid of it. Now, in, in the same vein of that whole thing, Atlanta with Julio. Right. Everybody's is everybody assuming that he's going to be traded because the, the contract says he should be traded or is the Atlanta Falcons want to move on? Because 
I want Julio as an Indianapolis Colt. I've actually texted Chris Ballard directly and told him, what are we even doing here? Like, let's, let's <laughs> make this happen. He, by the way, he gave me no answer. He, I think he, I think he did like a laugh reaction thing on it. Didn't even send words afterwards, right? Like there wasn't even uh, uh-huh. it, it, by the way, if I get anything, I'll send it to you though. I will let you know, yeah, but, appreciate but is that more of like fairy tale and he wasn't on the schedule and the schedule mm-hmm. release thing. They didn't have him on the graphic. He was in the uh, 3d thing, but the animation takes months to to make probably so i assume they had him in there is is there a chance julio moves and if julio moves and he gets traded for a third and a fourth rounder there's going to be 31 teams fan bases that are like why did we not get julio there how is this whole thing play out yeah. and why is it the way it is i don't think he goes for a third and fourth rounder i mean i think if it's that and also like if you're you know if you're the falcons why would you right like if you're going to trade him you're going to get something legit I mean, think about it. If you're Terry Fontenot, the new GM of the Falcons, you are. if you are going to trade Julio, you're going to do it for something where you say, look, people, like, I had to do this because they offered me a first-round pick or, or, you know, whatever it is. Um, the contract is a lot. He is obviously a great receiver who did not, you know, when he plays, he's incredible, but did not play all 16 games last year. He's older. He's got an incredibly awful contract. Um, and I think it's a team that, you know, they don't need to rebuild to want to say it's not a bad idea if we get out from under this, like, brutal contract for a 30-something receiver who wasn't on the field all the time last year. So I would say he, my understanding of this is they are open to it. Uh, it would have to be a lot. Um, and I, I would say if he was going to be traded before the draft made sense, the fact that he wasn't traded before the draft makes me think – it. It would take an injury, like some receiver for some really, really good team goes down and they say, this is our window. We're going to give up a little more for Julio than we originally thought because we just, we want to win and he's the missing piece. That's the way I think he gets traded. If I was a GM, I'm giving up, uh, if I'm a team that's just right there, like I can go. And this is the difference between me and GMs. I'm playing checkers. I've said it, not chess. I'm trying to win right now. Give me that guy. He gets on the team. We're immediately better. There's like 10 teams we listed off earlier Uh that if he was to go to that team, it'd be like, all right, they immediately potentially get going there. Connor, go ahead. Yeah, Rapshi, now that the Texans have like 15 different quarterbacks on their roster, is it safe to say that there's probably no chance uh, we see Deshaun Watson with them or with any other team in the NFL this season? No, I, I would not say that. Um, and by the way, I, there's been no, just like Rodgers, there's been no movement with Deshaun either. I mean, I know there was some hubbub about a potential settlement, a couple, yeah, hey, uh, whenever hey, that was. Who, did, are you the one that told Rich Eisen that? Because Rich Eisen said, and I just assumed it was somebody who was an insider for NFL Network, he said on the show that during the draft he had heard the reason why I was quiet is because there's a potential settlement coming or something happening. Are you the one that just goes up to Rich and says, hey, this is why, this is this. Is that that or is that somebody else? Or Because I just assumed I mean, you all get that information, right? Uh, you know, Rich, Rich is very well connected. But it, it was Rich interesting that the, he is. Yeah. Uh, he's on multi, multiple platforms. He's big deal. Um, he's big deal. Yeah. So are you, uh, by the way. Congrats. You're on YouTube right now. And Sirius. Wow. And wow. NFL Network. Wow. 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 You guys, wow. Just me or you guys also? We're not on NFL Network. I used to be on there. I was on a show that aired from uh, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. local time mm-hmm. over there for uh, Good Morning Football or NFL AM or whatever. It got canceled. It's pretty it awesome. Got canceled. Yeah. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, the it was interesting that both the lawyers came out and essentially said that there had been settlement talks. Um, oh. And one lawyer said the settlement's never going to happen. And then Rusty Harden came out and was like, this guy's been calling me all the time to try to settle, uh, which is true. And... You know, it's really a question of how much is going to be made. And this is what the lawyer said. How much is going to be made public? Um, and are we going to find out the amount? Are the um, alleged victims going to be allowed to speak? I mean, there's a lot of things that need to be settled before it actually gets settled. But as far as the, you know, as far as their quarterbacks, I don't get the sense it has anything to do with Watson. Just like Blake Bortles didn't have anything to do with Aaron Rodgers. It's really just I need someone to go out and practice. Um you know, maybe maybe they have a quarterback competition between Ryan Finley and Jeff Driscoll. I mean, Driscoll got money, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, but like that's not McAfee five, money. Oh, you know? no. hey, ten four. So, ten, it's not. It's, it's <laughs> you know, this is chump change in the quarterback world. Hey, we were both uh, third string, fourth string quarterbacks too mm-hmm. in the NFL. I don't know if you know that, Ian. Um, uh, oh, 
I knew that. Thank you. Believe me. Yeah, insider. I know. And by the way, I have to tell this story, uh, remind people of this. Ian actually knew of my retirement before everybody else. He was a part of the skit for the retirement. He held on to it. Uh, you're a G for that because I assume in your business, you either didn't think it was going to be news at all or actually respected the game, which I appreciate. No, I was horribly nervous that it was going to get out and I would lose the scoop. I swear to God. I was like, it, you know, I've held plenty of things for the right time so a trade can get done, so a contract can get done. But this was a fun one. And I was. I was at, I think it was Super Bowl week, right? I was at a Super Bowl party Houston, yeah. just holding my phone so I would get the text to fire. And then I, I then I, I got to put it out there and then I would just watch the retweets come in, man. By Great. the way, I thought everybody uh, would think it was bullshit because it was on Comedy Central. It, that, that particular <laughs> Super Bowl week, uh, when I say, you know, I'm joining Barstow or whatever, I'm retiring, I'm going to have a good time. Ian's a part of the announcement, right? Greg Olson, who is now the leader of Tight End University and going to be on Fox, I think the, he was a part of it. There was, what, 50 people from Barstow in there? We walked through, like, maybe an NFL hotel, this whole thing. Nobody had a clue. It came out of nowhere. And the, the fact that, you know, nobody leaked it, I thought to myself, like, awesome, but also... Nobody thought this was going to be news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyone care enough? Yeah, anybody know? Nobody cares. Is these, it... these kinds of things seriously like drive me crazy. Like, let's say I, a team announces something that I wanted to break, or someone else breaks something, and then I find out later how many people knew. Like, all these people knew, and no one told me. That's always like. Thankfully, I happen to be on the inside of the the McAfee retirement, but on some of the others, it just drives me crazy. Like, no one could just, you know. Whisper something to me on the side? Come on. Yeah, it has to make you question some of your relationships for sure. Todd, what do you have? <laughs> Ian, have you heard any buzz from Jacksonville about how uh, Tim Tebow has performed thus far today? Um, looked good. Yeah, he looked very good early. Mm -hmm. I thought, I will say this. Like, I caught the picture online of him walking in his jersey. Looks great. Does. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, we can all agree on that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. looks good, yeah. yeah uh, and I would say, you know, having the scoop earlier today that he was going to be wearing number 85. Um, oh, that was your was break? A, was, that was your was break? a pretty good one. That yeah. boy, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Because we all thought 15, you know, maybe five, whatever the case, go old school. But he said, no, when I dreamt of being a tight end, I dreamt of being in the 80s. I'm going yeah. 85. Uh, I got a question for you. Yeah, boy. I know I'm supposed to be answering the questions. The McAfee Show stance, what is the official Tebow stance? Are we, we, we love for, him. are we against, we love are him. we here for the popcorn? What is it? We love him. Come, Come on, Tebow. Hell, He's yeah. Tim Tebow. We, we, we understand... The people that are saying he's taking somebody's spot in potential opportunity, we understand that. Uh, but we also know that, you know, Tim Tebow's a Jacksonville legend, okay? He, he yeah. went to high school there. He's going to sell out that place. Him and Urban Meyer, he made Urban Meyer probably $100 million. <laughs> you know, so it's like a relationship business. We all kind of have the reality of this thing while also optimistically hoping that Tim Tebow's getting into the end zone oh. down there in front of those pools. We don't know if it's going to happen, but that's our stance on it, Ian. What, have you heard anybody that hates this decision in the NFL or understands the business as opposed to everybody else that does hate this from outside that just don't understand like this is one of the most inevitable things that I've ever seen. If Tebow wants to play yeah. tight end in the NFL, Urban Meyer just got a job in the NFL. He's from Jacksonville. It's in Jacksonville. This is just going to be something that's going to happen. That, that's just, we don't like it, but that's just going to be how it is, you know? I, I'm, I'm with you. And when I found out during draft week that he had worked out, I was actually kicking myself because I'm like, how did I not even think to ask about this earlier? Because, duh, like, obviously he's going to join the Jaguars. Um, i tell you this, like, there, obviously there's been fans who've been not thrilled about this, frustrated or whatever. From the NFL side, I don't think I've heard anybody complain because it's sort of like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's yeah. a training camp spot. It's a 90th spot. Like, okay, you know, like, well, whatever. If he, if he wastes everyone's time, it'll be kind of fun. And, God, what if he makes the team? Yes. Like he if, he, if he makes the team, it will be worth it. He will have earned it, oh, and then maybe he'll score a touchdown, and that would be oh, amazing. Oh, uh -huh. in the NFT. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, oh my and with the pool God. party in the yeah. back, maybe Shaw's mustache is sitting in a stand somehow like Ooh. this. You know, maybe God. Urban Meyer's got the whistle mm -hmm. down in the corner and Thibaut just goes up. High point. Oh, million I, want to, I want to invest in that right now. Yeah. Do that already? Ball for, I, I assume Gary V does have that thing locked down, but Trevor Lawrence <laughs> throwing that thing oh. to Thibaut in yes. front of Shaw in the pool. Oh, 
It's a new day in Jacksonville. Congrats, Donner. He could stink, but that could happen as well. We have no idea. That's why it isn't as big of a deal as everybody makes it, but let's celebrate the shit out of it. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. uh, the host of a show that is on hiatus, uh, for a good friend of the show, Insider, I assume probably an average golfer. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Yeah, yeah, yeah Rappi! Appreciate Thanks, you, man. Thank you. Um, AJ, we got to wrap this thing up on serious. Uh, your thoughts on today's show? One of our better ones or worse ones, you think? I don't. I mean, I don't know. That's not for me to judge, I guess. But you taking a shot at Rappaport's golf game on the way out wasn't nice. He said probably true. I said he said probably true. I said mm -hmm. he's probably average. The guy works. You can't, if you work, you can't be that great of a golfer. That's just how it goes. Is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah, Coach JB. Watches what if you shows. work on the course? Well, a lot of people fake do that. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have gotten away with murder on a golf course. Oh, yeah. They're doing business out there. I, I think I'm not hurt. Maybe I'll get to that point in life where I, that's how my, the business operates, you know, and I can just take six hours on the course and do three phone calls and be like, oh, I was working out there. Where are you? What, what, what did you do? Did you do more <laughs> yeah. swinging of the club or did you do more deal making on the phone? Both. They, they go with each other. It's like fascinating okay i do like the game that has been played for a long time though by those old whites uh-huh those old rich white guys listen <laughs> oh we get deals done on course come on what are you talking about what are you talking about gotta stay out there five six hours shaking hands deal. no business until after the turn i want to let you know aj when i start playing it's just gonna be me the ball and the course pal hell yeah yeah mm -hmm. i'm on a mission You're on when you start playing when do you think that may be when I'm done working. Ladies and yep. gentlemen, this has been Thursday, May 20th, 2021, live on Sirius XM Channel 8 to Mad Dog Sports Radio. Hi, hi. Chris Mad Dog hi, hi. doesn't necessarily love our show. We'll have an incredible show for you immediately following the six minute break that's coming in about 15 seconds. Our show tomorrow, Feel Good Friday, from the oh, FanDuel yeah. Beach House Woo. down in Tampa is going to be massive. Yeah. Yeah. Be a friend, tell a friend. Enjoy Mad Dog Unleashed. Hi, hi. I can't thank you enough for choosing to listen to us and allow us to penetrate your ear holes. Nailed it. Ear holes as the last word they yeah. hear before yeah. Chris Mad Dog Russo. There's some radio listener that is very pissed that I'm still on the air. I assume at that point. I thought you say ear holes. I did see some guy tweet that he couldn't wait for my fucking time slot to be given to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find another channel during the day on Sirius whenever he, this guy comes on. <laughs> See ya, dude. <laughs> Good luck fucking scrolling, pal. Yeah. Put down <laughs> your extra large soda and change the channel, pal. Whoa. Oh, oh, shit. This guy looked fit, dude. He, he ain't drinking soda. That ain't true. He was, I think he was potentially cooking the meth, this guy. <laughs> really? Yeah. So he, might, right. he might be drinking soda. I was kind of looking around. He was out in the backyard doing something a little weird with his kids. <laughs> Good oh. Lord. People don't think I have time to look whenever they say something, go into their history. Mm -mm. Photos tweeted from four or five years ago in the media <laughs> section of the Twitter. Oh, like, yeah. People think I don't. I do. I'm on a plane a lot. I'm on planes a lot. Plenty of time. I got nothing but time, you know, to kind of. The best is when you see, you click on it and then you go, oh, their last tweet was retweet for boobs. <laughs> You're like, oh, this guy's real What's wrong? Oh, and that guy. <laughs> and that guy What's wrong with boobs? What's wrong with that? Dude? No, no. By the way, that guy, <laughs> that guy's probably attacking me for something yeah. I did that's disrespectful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, if that's the case, then yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. Everything's in comparison to. Just like that Mad Dog Russo interview with what he said. Right. Yeah. Just like in that front office sports thing with what he's it's not like what it's not what you're saying, it's where the positioning of what you're saying is going. Well, you know, that's my biggest problem. Yesterday right. some people were saying stuff about, you know, the numbers they do as well. There's just a oh, few yeah. other things. <laughs> cool. There's just a you few son. other things. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I heard, I heard some lies coming out of people's mouths yesterday. <laughs> and it wasn't Gary V about perspective. Tell you that much, AJ. No, it never would be. <laughs> Is somebody in studio or you mean some other show? It somewhere? was on the internet. It was on the internet. I was listening. I was like. Oh, they talked about their numbers? Wait a minute. This motherfucker is lying. <laughs> oh, I right? know who you're talking about. You heard it too. Uh, I didn't hear the actual numbers part. I heard earlier part of the interview a quick clip but i have a guess it's the same person you're thinking yeah yeah probably and i got no beefs with anybody but i do know i'm like mm, that's not accurate liar that's not accurate <laughs> i know that's not accurate <laughs> yeah. i got a plane because that's not accurate <laughs> so i mean let's go to the phones let's go to evan in buffalo what's going on evan Ooh. Hey, Pat, AJ, boys, how you doing? Happy Thirsty Thursday. Oh, I, got a my God. I got a question and a statement. But well, my question is, oh, is uh, 
does Tom Brady being as successful and as great as he is, does that sort of overshadow uh, Peyton and like Rogers' greatness or other great quarterbacks? And my statement is, while Ooh. Brady is without a doubt the greatest quarterback of all time, I think he is far and away from the greatest athlete of all time. I think Evan's spot on there. I think I Tom would probably agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, he's faster now than he was when he was younger, though. He might yeah, only – he's got a Benjamin Button thing going on with his athleticism because yeah. <laughs> of that pliability. So maybe have a little bit of respect there. Um, Has anyone ever said that? Has anyone ever claimed that? No. No, Evan just well, want to make sure everybody knows. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Evan. It was a statement. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Evan. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Evan. AJ texted me, want to be inside on the joke of who we were talking about there. Or AJ uh, texted me there to say, hey, who we right? who we talking about? Did he know? Yeah, yeah, you know. He knew. Let's go to Andrew and Charlotte. What's going on, Andrew? AJ. Good knew. job, AJ. Good job, AJ. AJ. Thank you. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Yeah, you're on, Andrew. What's going on, pal? Hey, thanks for taking my call, Pat. Um, long time listener, first time caller. Hell yeah. yeah that's Shout out to you and the boys and AJ. Yeah. yeah, shout out to you, dude. Can't believe I'm talking to AJ. Oh, that's pretty crazy. Hey, 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 yeah. Let's go, Andrew. Good for you, Andrew. Oh, Thank you, AJ. The reason I'm calling is because of the comment you made earlier uh, about uh, Logan Paul saying that he could do anything. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I think he could. Thank I originally you. told Mitt to call you a stooge, but honestly, I think you're just giving the guys too much credit. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they couldn't be doctors, all right? They couldn't be lawyers. <laughs> astronauts. They, it, probably not going to be astronauts either. I'm not sure they're creating any cars. Maybe, though. Can't Maybe they'll it. start to sell their own they cars. Could. I think they could do... Well, what do you mean? What are you saying I'm a stooge for? What are you talking about? Well, um, I, I mean, you made the blanket statement those guys can do anything. Uh, they can oh. throw their money at anything, absolutely. But They can make money like doing it. anything, you got to have the money to yeah. throw the money. This is a chicken-egg situation. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, but you gotta have the knowledge. You gotta have, have we the figured the chicken egg situation out yet? It was an evolution. It came from a different fucking bird. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Jacob, what's going on? It is. It was another bird. Okay. It it's a cool brain. brain. What bird? What other bird? Pterodactyl. Hello? If a bird had your brain, it fly backwards and whistle Dixie. Bill Stewart told me <laughs> Bill Stewart told me that. <laughs> Happy we can tie together Hello. birds and brains. Brain. <laughs> what do you want to talk about, Jacob? Hey, boys. Uh, Pat, AJ, all you guys. I just wanted to warn you. First month is coming up, and rent's going to be due if you guys stay on the Jets' dick. All right? Wow. You guys continue to bash and bash and bash. Not us. Like that was Will. And Adam Gase is still the head coach. Yeah. We don't. That was a, not I'm us, Jake. Talking. You're listening yeah. to a different yeah. show. Wrong yeah. show. I'm talking about Zach's, crazy eyes. Zach's whoa, 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 whoa. mom. What, 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 what would make this what guy think the Jets are going to be good? Yesterday. Oh, yeah, you're right. Hey, yeah. Jacob, I'll have... Yeah, you're right, AJ. You got I made answer. a statement. I made a statement about what yeah. something that she did publicly. She made her Instagram private, correct? Well, yeah. the, ins- yeah. the issue was I'm we all laughed. I'm reporting on the news. Pat. We all laughed, and it was immediately after you said Zach Wilson's mom. Yeah. We laughed. Mm-hmm. I don't think the private Instagram line... Kind of got buried. Yeah, oh, it, it did not did. make it. So a lot of people just thought you were doing a your mom joke, which I also found awesome because a lot of people were laughing at that as well. Yeah. So John thinks yeah. the Jets are going to be really good. Jacob, I'm not sure he does. He said it seemed like. Well, he said rents still. He did say rents still. He definitely hopes. He probably hopes they're good, and he just doesn't want us to bash them. Let's go to Devin Donner in Wyoming. What's going on, Devin? What's up? Saw, dude. Can you hear me? Saw, dude. dude. Yeah. Saw, dude. Hey, so let's talk about Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Hey, what do you are you guys gonna come on over to the Vikings when he comes over to the Vikings or how's that? Oh, oh shit! Like yeah. oh, 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 what are you doing, Ty? Ty, he does. You're on Team 12. I think you've noted that diehard mm-hmm. Packers fan, but Team 12 all the way since getting to meet him and hang out with him and befriend him, basically the. What if he did go to the Vikings or the Bears or the Lions? Ooh, whoa. Not, not that they would, or this has not been talked about, but what happens when that happens if that does happen, Ty? Well, I mean, Kirk, listen, the Vikings are paying Kirk Cousins about $150 million, so they're stuck with him for a while. He ain't going to the Vikings. I okay. mean, if he finds himself in Denver or in San Francisco, who's to say? I don't know. I might I might be wearing a, a 12 jersey okay, of a so different color. That, so you are just like one of the players who has a no-trade clause who says, listen, 
here's the teams if he goes to I'll be a fan of. If there's another team though, you ain't doing it. And most specific, more specifically, NFC North. Yeah, not within the division. No can't way. Do it. You kidding me? Can't. And also, like, I mean, listen, he's going to be a backer. Now, what if he's a free agent though? A couple years. Well, you know, I mean, if it, it, it depends. if you would if you would have got traded right now, where like they basically just forced him out, and there was no like if he wants to go somewhere else, and there's kind of like a, a we happy, don't know. By the way, we don't know where, nope. where they stand. Right, right. exactly. No you know, so it makes it a little bit different. But uh, I'm not I'm not thinking about that. If he were to get traded right now. Shit, you know, I, I may be wearing a, a different jersey, Come but on over, I don't know pal. if it's you already happen. got it down. Dude. Uh, let's go to Jake in Cincinnati. He's going to potentially be a Steeler, says Steeler <laughs> fans after Roethlisberger retires. Jake in Cincinnati, what do you want to talk about, pal? I'm going to talk about how Bengals offensive line is 10 times better than a lot of people think it is. Also, shout out you and the boys and AJ. What up? Hey, what up, up Jake? Shout, shout out to you too, dude. Um, you're in Cincinnati, so let's talk about it. Why is it 10 times better? Did you not watch the games last year? Oh, I watched every single game, and it broke my goddamn heart every single time. Me too. But man. we got rid of fucking our shitty right tackle, our shitty right guard. We got Frank Pollock back. We're going to fucking sneak our way into the playoffs in a wild card at 11-6. and six. Who they get from the Vikings? Riley, 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 Riley. Reed from the Vikings as well. I like it, Jake. Hey, who they? Who they? Who they say gonna beat them Bengals? Who they? You're a big, um, you're a big Bengals fan. Pac-Man Jones yeah. just called out somebody in a boxing match. Uh, if he is anything, ab- what's that? Yeah, me too. All right, Jake. Yeah, we all agree on that. We all agree on that. I don't know who he's three hundred sixty-five out of three hundred sixty-five. I know he's fighting, but he's winning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hope it happens. I'd love to see Pac in the ring. Me too. And but he said, I ain't going to talk it if I ain't walking. I assume he's been training too. <laughs> yeah. oh, he's yeah. got that new training facility that he opened up. Oh, yeah, yeah. over there in uh, it, right in Cincinnati. But I think it's across the river in that town. I don't know what the town is in Kentucky. What is that, AJ? Um, good question. Right across the river? Yeah, it's like it's a very cool area, actually. It's like a strip almost of yeah. stores. And it's, uh, it, I think. Oh, it, um. Yeah, I don't know. The aquarium and everything's right there. Yes. Newport. 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 I think it's in there. I think it, that's where he's got a pizza place and his training place. I'm not 100% sure. End zone pizza. End zone pizza. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good wings. He's also, I think he's got some bud, too. I think yeah, he's trying he to sell Hell bud. Yeah. I think he's in the cannabis industry, too. Yes. Pac-Man, big businessman. Yeah. And I assume boxing will potentially be big, big uh, business for him as well. That is why he was training. Great athlete there. Knows how to find a jaw quickly we've mm-hmm. seen it on film uh that is something and not scared of anybody so that's no. like one of those things you know man imagine if he goes in there and just fucking becomes the guy too oh man how old is he he's probably 38 god damn it he can do it yeah but i think you know to get a championship it's gonna take a little bit yeah huh? yeah oh is it 37 is boxing is boxing different than trying to just Get into a golf event. Okay, all right. Let's for a Pac-Man. For Pac-Man, it's much different than for me. Okay. Yeah. I got 31 years to do this. What I'm saying with that is, I don't know the shelf life on boxing, but he has not done it. I guess so. He's just like a, a young. I don't know. I think he's going to be very good though. I, I think he'd be a good representation of like athletes too going in there. Like now, who knows against actual boxers and all that shit? I assume Pac has trained, and he is great athlete, offense, defense, special teams player. I mean, unbelievable freak athlete. Uh, but that'd be good representation for us if he was you know, yeah. in there and do well. You know, like, all right, football guys ain't getting, you know, booty up as Jenny Crowder. <laughs> hey, football players ain't getting booty up out there. Who is Ocho fighting? Do we know yet? I, I don't seen. think so. Wait, it's happening, like, what, in three weeks Yeah, or I don't know if he's fighting anymore because I don't know if they could find an opponent. Pac-Man. Ocho backed out of that. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. By the way, Ocho, nobody with lost Yeah, I was like, yep, yeah. yeah. Smart. Smart. Good Ocho, decision. Yeah, that's a good decision. You know, we're all we're all Bengals here. Let's go to Pepe in Mexico to close out the day. Pepe, what's going on, pal? Orale, cabrones. There he is. It is great to be in the presence of greatness, the punter of the decade, the college football and NFL champ. Mis amigos in the toxic table, the hammer down dynamic duo, but let's not forget. Our personal fitness motivator and wellness, CFO of our hearts, Phil Main, the greater regional show. Let's go. Yeah, he's not here. <laughs> anyway, shout out to whatever he is. 
Okay, yeah. Shout out to CFO. Shout Phil. out, Phil. But like, I wish. By the way, yeah, I wish Phil. Phil. Yes, Phil would be a great addition to this this particular office and studio on a daily basis. But he's going to be mayor of our hometown and turn that thing around in no time. And he has to work satellite. He travels out here. So what I was saying was, whenever you say like you're in the presence of CFO fit ass Phil, I'm like, wait, do you know something? I don't know. It's Phil here. I thought Phil potentially did on. a little drop in appearance. Then I had to quickly adjust the situation or, or read the situation. He's not here, which is a shame, which is it a is shame. Damn shame. It is damn shame, Pepe. So we're all bummed out about it, but that's not what Pepe does. Pepe makes everybody feel good. What do you want to talk about? Hey, I just want to warn AJ about you following the footsteps of a legend. So AJ, beware. Mr. McAfee might be chasing the cowboy great in one of his leads, Mr. Tony Romo, on the golfing tour and showcasing the shoes, the grandpa shoes that he's wearing. Are you planning, Sketches. Pat, to be uh, making a deal with Hocus and playing golf? That's your, your deal? If I was to sign a deal with Hoka, Pepe, uh, by the way, um, gracias por la fono. Si, mi amigo. Mi amigo. <laughs> Fucking love speaking Spanish, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Pepe's the best. But if I got a deal with Hoka and I was a professional golfer, go ahead and classify that as a big-time fucking win for the life. Yeah. Go ahead and classify that as a big-time senior citizen Pat McAfee win if I make it that far. I'm all about it, AJ. Wouldn't that be a dream? If Hoka was smart, they would jump in the game right now and get with you, you know, get a, a sponsorship deal early on when it's cheaper than, you know, once – you're what, 50, 55 years old, and you're regularly playing events on the PJ and the Champions Tour? Maybe Hoka will make me some like golf shoes. Oh, uh, Hoka wants. So I can yeah, walk. You'll be, or... you'll be six foot seven out there. It'll be awesome. Yeah, wait till yeah. you see my fucking driver, pal. I mean, <laughs> it's going to be long. It's going to be tough to keep up with me. My back hasn't taken as many hacks as theirs have, mm -mm. just naturally, because I haven't played as much. And I got the big, big, big stick. Yeah. I might be the DeChambeau of that thing all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. yeah. In those Hokas on some platforms. Ben on it. Well, 20 million. Huh? Well, I mean, I would like to get some odds on that as well. Why has it gone up? Why hasn't that gone up? The Marc Andre Fleury bet is, uh, I lost that one, I guess, but he almost scored the other night. Is this an act? What is this for? To go gold brain. It's Who gold gave you that? It's for perspective. <laughs> Wait, what perspective? I don't know. You got screws in it. Is that, I could see that's the screws. That's oh, a, you that's can't take it apart? No, I thought I could potentially. It's like a doctor's office. Yeah, I want to take this one off, look into the right front lobe. Uh -huh. Right. And see the memory department. The cerebral cortex. <laughs> Bingo. Mm -hmm. And then the medulla oblongata right back here. Oh, of course. I Bingo. thought we could potentially zoom in on. Mm -hmm. But no. What Christ the hell are you supposed to do with it? I think I'm just supposed to hold it. Remember. Is it, what's it made out of? Is it a paper? It's fucking heavy. Gold. Hey, gold. Is it a paper? I mean, that's a that's a weapon right there. Baron Corbin would love this thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's somewhere on whatnot I could probably sell this. Whatnot, by the way. You could give it to Mitt so he could actually have one. Oh! <laughs> Today's show is brought to you by Whatnot. <laughs> whatnot is a live shopping app where you can buy collectibles like sports cards, Pokemon cards, and almost anything else. Not every. Not. Almost it has to be in there. Nice. Uh, some are calling it eBay 2.0. Bill is going to be going live on Whatnot Friday afternoon, breaking some sweet packs to auction off. I'm eventually going to go live on Whatnot and auction off some stuff from this desk and around the office for Fur the Brand, my wife's foundation to, you know, help combat canine cancer, which is awfully costly. We found out when our daughter, Valerie, uh, the Pitbull Sharpay mix that has captivated my life, got diagnosed with cancer, had to have surgery. It was worth a lot. Hot. Me and Sam looked at each other like, there's probably other people that have to deal with this that can't do this. So we put a foundation together, and we'll be selling some things to help pay for people's medical expenses whenever their dog battles through cancer. She's already saved, I think, or been a part of not saved because cancer is an ever-going thing. But I think six dogs in their families wow, have already okay. been. Let's go. So. Very young. Can't wait to sell some stuff. Hit the link in the bio right now to sign up and follow me on the app so you can be notified when we go live. That's whatnot.app. Dot link forward slash e forward slash Pat McAfee show. Okay. Click the link in the bio. Yeah. yeah. Click the link in the bio. But we can sell anything on there. Almost anything in there. eBay 2.0. Let's go. That's huge. So I think if we get this brain thing on there, there's those yeah. people that like like skulls and shit. They'll love it. Mm -hmm. Is that a human brain? Like a real human brain? It wasn't a human? It feels like yeah. it feels like it it wasn't, but it is like the exact size, right? Isn't oh, yeah. It looks like it. I don't know. That might be a little small. A little small. But you think? I yeah, think so. That, that looks a little too big, probably. Might be dehydrated a little bit. 
a little drunk night. Go ahead, put some water mm -hmm. on that. Probably had to dry it out to send it. That's True. what it feels the way it feels. Mm -hmm. It's a little smaller. Jeez. Yep. Dense. Concussion. It is dense. Yeah. yeah. CT coming right oh, up. Geez. Uh oh. Uh. What's that? C. T. <laughs> e. <laughs> Hey, were you allowed to head the ball when you played soccer as a kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. You know, what now they can't. I don't think they let them head it till high school. Jeez. Yeah, they also they started handing out those headband things. With, what? Yeah, with pads what on them. What kind of Mickey Mouse? <laughs> I seen a guy though. I, I I had a teammate that uh, maybe he wasn't a teammate. Might have been at a tournament I was at. He ran his head right into the post. I mean, oh, the helicopter oh. had to come in. I mean, the whole thing. He Split was put his head open. Yes. Well, they're, they're, they're more worried about the ball hurting the little kids' heads. And I, I, in the there's a the parents versus kids game. We played the ten year old, <laughs> my daughter's team. I, I headed a ball that a dude kicked me, and it was it was wet out, and it was a heavy ball too. And I'm, I thought like. Okay, I understand this rule. These kids should not be heading this thing. So you got another concussion. You're supposed to hit Damn. it right here, hairline. But yeah, supposed? I did. Great, but I'm saying that ball was heavier than I thought when it was like kind of water. Your chin. A, guy, I, a guy I played with got so many concussions, he had to wear the helmet, ended up playing for the Canadian Paralympic team. Jeez. What? Wow. Let's, let's go. Cause, cause he, Wait, what did it turn him into? He just had so many concussions. He was allowed to play for this so team. I it was insane. Play. He was like the best one. Like all. It was, hey, by the way, it was absurd. I learned something about uh, another sport. <laughs> that's, not fair. that's not fair. Yeah, yeah, hey, hey, like, this this yeah. should be an Icarus episode. Yeah, yeah. he's the Canadian Paris Soccer Player of the Year. Yeah, I would assume. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyways, Paralympians. I've watched because uh, we have a lot of. I don't want to say a lot, but there's like five noted American Paralympians that watch this show and interact with us. So I've I've gotten a chance to check them out and like see the highlights. Hey, there's some incredibly fantastic shit going. Yeah. There's uh, the sled hockey, sledge hockey, sledge hockey, sledge? I think it's sled. Sled hockey? There's some dangles out yeah. there. I mean, there's this other sport. Uh, I think it's uh, sit-down volleyball people are playing mm -hmm. I watched. <laughs> what do they call it? Yeah, and then there's murder ball. Obviously, obviously, old buddy is is the basketball where they're in like metal wheelchairs, just yeah, creating sparks and everything <laughs> yeah. like that. I would assume your buddy, though. I mean, was it from headers or was it from fighting? What did he do? He just headed the ball so much. I don't know. It was insane. One day, he just he was like one of the best goalies in my city, and then all of a sudden, he was just sniping goals for the Canadian Paralympic team. <laughs> that came out of nowhere, huh? Yeah, it was wild. Hey, good for him. Congrats to him, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Olympian, yeah. dude. I used to use the head, though, a lot, AJ. Obviously, a little bit bigger, yeah. goal scorer, fly around. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What do, hey, what, what country do you think is the best in the, uh, the sit-down volleyball category? I think we probably win yeah. every single time. USA, dude. Yeah. Like in chair, are they in chairs or on the ground? Ground. On the ground, they play volleyball from the ground. Yeah, some they lower than you, that, dude. Are you fucking? Wait, do they what scoot is, around? Hey, what do you mean? They got to be in some it's kind a of a smaller. You like what's your deal? deal? What's your fucking deal? Some culture First do. off, it's not, not called chairs. sit down volleyball. They we know that. Down. <laughs> <laughs> Stationary. You get it. We all know it's not called what you just called it. Yeah. Is what you just yeah. said to me. I think I it is. Sit down, it you is. It it's literally called sitting volleyball. Yep, sitting volleyball. Sitting volleyball. How about that? Okay. That How do you feel now, scumbag? Can we put the article? Can you send the article over to Foxy, whatever this is, so we can get this up, so I can you know verify? Because there's been a couple things now I've said that everybody kind of just deems irresponsible to be said. Yankee in the outfield having sex during games. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, that ended up happening. Handwritten story from Mickey Mantle himself. Okay, now oh, with this one, it's like, I've seen this, though. This is a real thing. Need to talk about it. Need to legitimize it so that A.J. Hawk can maybe have some respect for our sitting volleyball team. That would be very nice of you, potentially. Well, let's see. Let's see if it's called sit-down volleyball. They sit on the ground, you say, and they all have their own positions and you can't move from your spot? Nobody what? said that. No, I never said that. You said that. First included in the Paralympic Games in 1980, AJ. Been around a little bit. It's governed by World Para Valley. It's been around a little bit. Yeah. Cool. Can I see a picture? I just sent one in. I think Jay's looking. It. Yeah, I think we're getting it. I sent one Cito in. had to go run to the John. It looks awesome, if we're being honest. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's why, by the way, that's why I remember it, because it is. There's like real... I feel like we should put a sit-down volleyball court in our new uh, church. By the way, the church is coming together nicely. Here we go. Put, yes. yeah, put a put a racquetball court in there. AJ, I actually do love it. Maybe. 
Bingo. Oh, right. okay. oh that's right. awesome. That. Bingo. And by the City way, and volleyball. Hey, they are. They're moving. No, they're moving. You yeah. said they weren't moving. No, I didn't say that. that. You <laughs> called it stationary volleyball. No. I did not say that. No. Oh, God, I never said that. I never said that. I never said that. Hey, they fucking smash this ball around. Oh, I believe it. By the way, there's <laughs> there's real whip on that thing. Yeah. Let's get out of here. <laughs> we got to hop on a plane. Yeah, you're going to Tampa. You got the uh, keys this time? That happened the gate, first. Gate opener? That was like a decade ago. We're like ago. a month into this, dude. We're pros now. I don't have them. Somebody else does. <laughs> that is uh, something we did have to change. Uh, I wonder if the plane will have Wi-Fi. That'd be cool if it did. It's always like a nice trip back in time without it. But, you know, you kind of you and your thoughts. It's a little bit annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully that'll happen. And uh, hopefully it's not 4,000 degrees down there. It gets thick. It will be. Ooh, yeah. It gets so thick humid. down there as soon as you it's land. It's 4,000 degrees in Ohio. What, isn't it hot in Indy? Yeah, it's 81 or something like with 4,000 humidity, 4,000% 4, mm, yeah. humidity or something. Six degrees right now. Hey, Z. Hi, 87. Z, Low welcome. Of yeah, boy, Z. Hey. 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 Hey, baby, Z. It's going to be 90 tomorrow for you guys. Only. So we figured out the uh, air conditioning system in the house. It had a schedule that we had to go through and change. Uh, Zito did for a couple of them. I hit two of them. You had to literally go to every change in the schedule, push it, and cancel it. Push oh, it and cancel yeah. it. Because they, they probably have it go up to like 85 after 9 p.m. or something. Yeah, yeah. Much. It's like, no, no. This thing's going to be 66, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. Let's... Forever. Did you guys, do you guys leave it on that like the entire week while you're not there? So no? I was I was kind. <laughs> Wednesday night. Smart. I stopped it. So it's only when we're there. Smart. You know what I mean? It's yeah. only when we're there. But we would get there and it would be 95 degrees. So yeah. hot. Can't have this. Okay? We're only here for fucking three days. Can't have it be... 200 degrees for the first day and a half mm -hmm. or whatever. So we had to outsmart the system, but yep. we did it, didn't we, Zito? Hell yeah. yeah. We did it. We figured it out. Way to go, Z. Let's get the hell out of here, shall we? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, I appreciate you so much, AJ. Thank you to everybody that watched. Um, I have not been wa It's not been on my computer at all lately, the YouTube comments or anything like that. So I genuinely have no idea how we're doing until at night I kind of look at the clips and shit like that. Thank you all so much for rocking with us every single day. We got to get it, make it more interactive with the YouTube comments section. That is a goal of mine going into next football season. How do we make the YouTube comments oh, section YouTube a much more vital? Yeah, but YouTube questions, you know, th that involved like you having to focus in the comments section and not on the show for a while. And then it, it kind of distracted you for a bit. So we have to figure out how we do it properly but i would like the youtube comment section to be a lot more active in a lot bigger part of the show because i appreciate everybody on youtube a lot mm -hmm. but i don't know how to do it properly you know i don't know how to not take away from something else to make it good you know aj i'm trying to figure that out just trying to thread the needle there you know I like how you can interact with the people that are watching the show live that's what you're trying to do yeah twitter's easy yeah. twitter's very simple that's yeah obviously i mean you know i am a tech guy i'm a social media person but mm -hmm. i'd have to think about this one for a little bit do you know you did very well on the internet yesterday? I don't even think you know it. And you know I, I didn't at you either because you don't even know <laughs> I it. I saw that. No, I saw it, by the way. But yeah. Oh, you saw it? <laughs> Whatever you said. I'm not going to I'm not gonna tag him because this stooge doesn't understand the internet. <laughs> <laughs> stooge. I didn't say stooge. I was okay with it. I'm okay with it. I didn't it. say stooge at all. I, I didn't say stooge at all. But if I at you, I think the algorithm sees it and there's potentially things. So I just kept it clean instead. And I'm happy you saw it. I'm happy Axel showed you it or whatever. But boy, you got people that love you out there, AJ. I hope you know that. You don't get to ever hear it because you don't go on the internet as much. But there's a lot of massive AJ Hawk fans. I hope you know that. I mean, that's if that's the case, that's very nice of them. I, I've told you a million times. I love being on the show. I have this is the most fun I have on any show that I've done over my time. And yeah, I, and, I enjoy I enjoy it every day. And you do a lot of shows, though, too. We oh, saw too many. Yeah. You know, Bill Burr said you can't be canceled if you just don't read it. <laughs> you also can't hear the congratulations on how awesome you are either. So I just want to make sure you know that like you, you hide from a lot of these things, but you don't get to see a lot of these things that people say good stuff. So I appreciate you every day, boys. You as well. Can't thank you enough. Thank you, Pat. Foxy, thank you, Pat. stay away from the Penguins tonight, please. No yes, betting sir. on them. That uh, <laughs> the entire office almost imploded last time. Mm -hmm. Hammered down boys in 37 minutes. They're going to continue their heater. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate you guys. Uh, we'll see you from Tampa tomorrow at the FanDuel Beach House. Um, shout out to all of you. See you tomorrow. Cheers.